It's like this nope. first-person horror thing coming to PS5. It looks in the style of, uh, of an RE7, oh, which is wait. cool. The screenshots were better than the teaser trailer, in my opinion, but that's not my point. Apparently, there were rumors right after it was revealed that Kojima was behind it, which did not oh, turn out to be true. That's that one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but And I get why some people made the connection, although still, I thought it was funny because it quickly proposed the question to me of, like, if you were a small indie studio working on a game, how would you feel if once you announced it, everyone just presumed it was... Kojima? Yeah. I mean, I feel pretty good. I, I would too. I, yeah. But like, <laughs> I thought you were going to say they made a game about my dad. <laughs> it, it depends, because then when it's not Kojima, then all, your, all the people who would have been your fans are now disappointed, maybe. Or... Or that, yeah, you spin it the other point. way, and you go, no way, no, uh, we've got an editor here, so you could go either way with it, I guess. I thought you were going to say the opposite of what do you think Kojima thinks about it. Oh. <laughs> Where, like, or if you were a game director, and then every every once in a while when something would get announced, everybody thought it was... I mean, <laughs> thought it was you. <laughs> Kojima has been, uh, in the past, a pretty big supporter of other weird indie shit he yeah, thinks is yeah, no. doing go- cool stuff. For sure. I played that game Framed because of Kojima. What was Framed? Framed is a it's a mobile game. Well, I think it's also on PC. It's a playable comic. Okay. So, so like the whole novel? the whole thing is organized into comic book frames and your guy runs from frame to frame but like each comic one, zone? but each one is a different <laughs> angle. So it'll be like here's a hallway with a door and he runs up, opens the door, and goes through, and then the next frame is from the opposite end of that hallway, so you see him running towards the camera, and then the next one, he's running oh. away from the camera. Hmm. And you can see, like, guards' position on the next frame, so you know when your guy is going to cross by the guards' thing, and you have to, like, plan... You have to, like, move the frames around so that he goes Wait, past without crossing the guards. That sounds all right. I, yeah, I it's try pretty cool. Yeah. What is it on? I played it on iOS. I don't okay. know if it's on anything else. We're starting this off at the sale. I so I um <laughs> man, if only people stop stealing my information. If only I had. You're gonna say Express or NordVPN? <laughs> one of the, which 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 one got hacked? Yeah, yeah. Uh, NordVPN got okay. hacked. LifeLock was the guy that gave away a social security number. <laughs> yeah. <right>? Yep. yeah. <laughs> People donated money <laughs> in his name. <laughs> the last thing I was going to say about Abandon, though, is uh, Kojima also has a history of fake uh, yeah. game company and, like, you yep. know, the way that Phantom Pain was... What are you talking about? That that studio with the guy who burned his face in an accident, that was uh, the, totally legit. Wasn't it, like, Moby Dick or Blue Whale Studio or something? Yeah, Moby exactly. Dick. It was okay. Moby Dick yeah, Studios. Yeah, yeah. Yep, exactly. It was a real <laughs> thing. 7780 is the studio that That's made the PT. PT. One. Yeah. yeah. If I was at if I was at Indie Studio, <laughs> I would find Kojima's like cousin or something like that and hire him on board. And be like, <laughs> then be like, no guys, face off and it's yeah, Kojima, it's Kojima. And, and, yeah, yeah. like E three or something. No, dude, we don't have Hideo Kojima. We have Kidio uh, Kidio Bojima. <laughs> it's his second cousin. <laughs> or I would I would try and spin it and I would be like, no, but we would love to hear Mr. Kojima's feedback on our game. No, yeah, that that would be. I actually don't know where this this, this studio is from. I think part of the reason that people jumped, like on connecting those dots, it was because they share the same office. <laughs> no, no, well, then, it was that nobody could find anything on them. Uh, they like they like just registered a domain or something. This is when we find out that's no indie game studio. That's a tax scheme. <laughs> <laughs> They're based out of Panama. <laughs> yeah, we just opened a game studio in the Cayman Islands. <laughs> Invest here. <laughs> <laughs> what is up, everybody? And welcome back to the new and improved Hot Button. Uh, we know it's been a while, but it'll all be worth it once you hear what exciting topics we have in store, such as this one. Uh, C2021 not only marks the return of us, but also the return of G4, a once dead as hell television network whose main mission was to create and air programs exclusively centered around all things tech and video games. Um, it was a pretty important to me growing up as far as my TV watching goes, and 
Honestly, um, just wild to see something that dedicated to the industry and culture on such a large, expensive scale. Um, especially when you consider how niche and nerdy gaming as a hobby used to be perceived as. Um, so where did it come from and what the hell happened to it? Uh, it seemed like a recipe for at least a minor success in the era of cable, right? Um, well, what do you say we hop in our time machines and find out just how it Rise quickly crashed hard into their unfortunate downfall, uh, along with what they are currently building with their now soon-to-be rebirth. Uh, as I said before, this is Hot Button 2.0. I'm your host for today, Randall Beatrice, here with Austin Blakesley, Yo. Chris Nudaboom, Hello. And joining us over the internet, Andrew Banks. Hi, I'm live from New York. <laughs> What's it like all the way out there? Uh, it's, a, it's a lot like not being here, I guess, because I'm just in my office, so I could be anywhere. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> Reporter the on the scene. Yeah, <laughs> he's holding a microphone outside his apartment. <laughs> <laughs> he's like talk, talking into a camera, but there's no camera there. <laughs> What's the leather like? What time is it? You should see the weird looks all everybody's giving me as they walk their dog. Uh, yeah. <laughs> New York seems like the type of place you could open your window and ask for somebody's a screw screaming ask for someone's opinion to have someone respond <laughs> yeah but the answer is always shut the fuck up yeah, yeah. That, that, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so who's ready to get nostalgic then annoyed then accepting then hopeful is that the know. stages of definitely grief? laughing <laughs> yeah. yeah it is with g4 yeah, yeah exactly yeah. it'll be a fun ride either way but uh let's roll all right quick anecdote yeah when we first got digital cable box at my house Okay. And they had we had all the extra channels. Yeah. All I did was watch G4 and Nickelodeon Gas. So we have to do an episode <laughs> of Nickelodeon Gas. And sports. <laughs> I was on Gas. Let's do a Nick Arcade episode. <laughs> uh, that Ooh. would be kind of funny. Do, is Nick Arcade streaming anywhere? Is that? I don't know. Yeah. If it was, it would be on Paramount Plus. You think they have the? Oh, I guess so. Then Subscribe. I using coupon code Hot. <laughs> That's not that doesn't work. I <laughs> made it up. <laughs> so just to paint a little picture, our uh, our story begins in the early aughts. Uh, the growth of video games as a commercial medium was reaching an all-time high. Home computers were now ubiquitously a part of every, or almost uh, every, American household. The Game Boy Advance was dominating the handheld market. The console wars were raging hard between the Xbox, GameCube, and still best-selling system of ever the playstation 2 uh-huh um never heard of it <laughs> it played dvds oh <laughs> yeah well game boy advance played those little portal 140p <laughs> episodes or whatever yeah you can watch tenant on game boy advance you can't watch you can't watch tenant on dvd <laughs> and i was gonna say the xbox you could play dvds you just needed the you uh, needed the remote the remote um, so and no the GameCube longer was a dumb console that didn't have hey, full size discs. The, Panas had a candle, the Panasonic, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the Panasonic Q, Q could play. Yes, I knew that was gonna. Come I guess up. what the, <laughs> the, the the remote for it itself is eighty five dollars. <laughs> Not even the for consoles, the consoles, two thousand. Yeah, the consoles like working. Yeah, like eight hundred. People 900. have modded them to be. Sorry, I can't get into. <laughs> uh, so no longer was anyone fearing a, a repeat of the crash of eighty three. Games were here to stay. Minus the Dreamcast, um, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, there, there was money to be made, uh, uh, is my point. <laughs> and searching to capitalize on this was a man named Charles Hershorn, the then president of Disney Animation. Uh, although it wasn't just all cartoons for him, as he absolutely saw the potential in jumping on the popularity of video games, as well as their path to being more respected in broader terms with what they could achieve graphically and technically. You you remember that was like a big thing of the era of just like these aren't the games you grew up with. Look what they look like now. <laughs> the and attitude era extended into video games as well as wrestling. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yes. The minute John Carmack gave away a Ferrari, I was like, video games are here forever. Yeah, <laughs> that was that was the thing. That was the moment. <laughs> What about what about when the uh, when oh damn it I don't remember his name the Gizmondo guy split his Ferrari in half was, oh, that, that was yo, my moment future spoilers dude yeah I know <laughs> sorry we'll get to the Gizmondo someday <laughs> if we will uh, so why wasn't there a channel that focused on this stuff he thought and and uh, he was he was right uh, there really wasn't anything to closely engage with that audience outside of occasional E3 footage on news outlets or Spike. Um, there were other places on television for food, music, home and gardening, animals, movies, of course. It just it made sense to have something fill the void when studies showed just how much of the younger and hipper demographic were sitting in front of that boob tube. 
I was looking for an excuse to say that phrase again. Cause it's, <laughs> I don't think anyone's uttered it in like 20 years. Oh, boob tube? Boob tube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to bring it back. Uh, yeah, boobs. <laughs> now, Tech TV did exist at, uh, at this point, launching back in 98. Uh, of course, then it was known as ZDTV. Uh, regardless, it wasn't exactly what Hershorn was talking about. That was more geared to the computer engineering crowd and far from the energetic entertainment someone who was actively playing a Quake or EverQuest was yearning for. Uh, not only that, but it wasn't, it wasn't really available um, to the masses either. Uh, so I don't know actually even how many uh, American providers offered it as an option. Probably not many. Um, and yeah, keep this in mind for later too. Uh, a video I took ample notes on also brought up a website called uh, uh, Suedo. dot com. Pseudo. 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 Man, this is the problem with writing. That's my like, dog. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Though no, no, this is with a P. Oh uh, yeah, no, never mind. Yeah. It's not my dog. <laughs> Sorry, Pseudo. <laughs> uh, th that featured the All Games Network channel. Um, however, it did require a solid broadband connection. And even then, the picture output was small and not great. Couldn't full screen uh, shit at the time. Um, meanwhile, online communities through sites such as IGN and GameSpot could only offer so much in terms of the same thing. Recognizing this problem, Hershorn went to visit the aforementioned E3 Trade Expo to meet those working in the field and do research. It was loud, packed, and full of passion. This honestly was all he really needed to see to reinforce his big idea. A, a channel to grab in the teenage age group that advertisers so desperately wanted to reach. After all, think of the exposure that developers, publishers, and manufacturers would finally get for the first time ever. Um, you know, game commercials were a thing, but this would be different. Uh, tonally and aesthetically, it was decided that it would present itself with an unconventional vibe not dissimilar to an MTV. <laughs> Which oh, no. likely shared, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which likely shared many viewers during its initial run, uh, well, an early MTV, uh, when it still had its quote rebellious attitude and underground feel. Is that In what other you guys words, they didn't have a budget. That's what <laughs> yeah, 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 actually, that's. The... <laughs> nah, it's indie, so man. They're looking to make shows like Next and Bully Beatdown. Punk rock. Yeah. <laughs> I do remember trying to look up E3 videos on the internet in, pre I, this would have to be pre-broadband for me, so yeah. you'd spend like half an hour downloading, on very good dial-up, half an hour downloading like a <laughs> 10 second clip of Majora's Mask or whatever, and you're like, yeah. man, that might be pretty good, I guess. <laughs> God, downloading like game trailers, I did that a lot. And the, they, 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 they did take forever. I'm going to make an embarrassing confession. Oh, 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 this is back in the day good. of uh, Kazaa and LimeWire and BearShare. But anybody, I know, I, I know. anybody who used BearShare, you know what they're using it for. Morpheus <laughs> is another one. Oh, yeah. Morpheus. Uh, I, I was a, mostly a Kazaa and, uh, and LimeWire guy. I was Kazaa at, start, at the start, then went to LimeWire. Yeah. I tried to download. Napster predated me just a little bit. Yeah, uh, I tried to download a video game trailer. Oh, what was it? I cannot remember at oh. the time, but I remember, all I really remember was it was like an M-rated game that I wanted to play. Uh, was it because it was M-rated? The M file size, I, I know now it's... Dead or Alive I, Extreme Beach Volleyball. <laughs> something along those lines, <laughs> yes. Something along those lines of like scantily clad, uh, like, yeah, anyway. Uh, I tried to download it. And it downloaded, and it downloaded very, very quickly. <laughs> what else did it give you with it? It herpes. bricked my computer. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Computer herpes. It, it, computer it, herpes. It, 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 it bricked the compact family computer uh, that we had. How'd you explain that to the, uh, I the didn't. household? <laughs> I didn't. You're like, I don't know what that Well, you gotta, you gotta remember, like, like, when we turned our computer back on, there was a hard, uh, a hard drive disk read error. So, like... Yeah. All we, what we had to do is like just basically wipe it, un, like reformat it, do everything, and it was fine. Um, and yeah, uh, but that was also back in the day when like nobody knew what was going on. It was just like, oh, we got a virus. Also, right? yeah, antivirus stuff has, has gotten so much better over the years that I don't, yeah. I don't know if uh, <laughs> nowadays, nowadays, all you really need is Windows Defender if you're using Windows. You have to go out of your way to, to, to get really, a, to, yeah. yeah, to find a virus that'll break but, your PC. But seeing as like <laughs> even back then, uh, my brother Matt and myself were the IT technicians for our parents' computers. Yeah, 
it was just like you probably are the now, onus was like, some we still too, are yeah. we, trust me we still are <laughs> um the onus was on us to fix it and that's like just what i did i just yeah. said we got a virus don't worry i already fixed it called geek squad didn't say why and then my parents were like oh thank god you fixed it and I was like, you didn't ask who caused it. <laughs> <laughs> Your dad was downloading this game trailer, and then yeah, the whole thing yeah, just yeah. shut off. Uh, <laughs> so this was an uh, this was an interesting pitch for sure, and uh, and he, uh, Hershorn got hard to work getting uh, funding, talent, producers together, uh, you know, uh, to launch what we all uh, knew as G Four on April twenty fourth, two thousand and two. Uh, right after a hell of a year for some amazing releases. So the tagline was TV for gamers. The the number number four. Ah, that's clever. Uh, yeah, yeah. No one's done that <laughs> before. <laughs> I resonate with that. <laughs> it was straight and to the point. Dude, lead um, speak, dude. <laughs> <laughs> with the name seemingly being selected at random by Hershorn's uh, wife to land a snappy sounding URL that wasn't already taken. Uh, I guess when was the dot com? boom or bubble uh, uh, only okay. a few years earlier oh, yeah. Right, right. yeah that makes sense well it, it had burst a few years earlier i guess oh, okay. the more accurate way to put it yes well, everyone it? acquiring as many like domains as at, f- at first his wife wanted goatsy but they quickly found out that was already taken <laughs> <laughs> then they tried lemon party yeah <laughs> <laughs> then blink 182.com <laughs> it wasn't used um, it was it was primarily promoted through magazines and devoted sites, press statements uh, prior to the date, but it wasn't overly aggressive. Uh, remember, they wanted to be cool, and cool spreads best with word of mouth. Um, what certainly wasn't as cool, though, was that they were owned by cable company and local nemesis uh, to us, Easterners, Comcast. I thought you were going to say Lee Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's West Coast. <laughs> yeah, Comcast, the Leland Yee of the East. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that about him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, if it's one thing they got, it's cold, hard cash. To back a, a venture like this, anyway. Uh, and I guess anything else. Yeah, they better be able to start TV for gamers. I pay them $100 a month. <laughs> For for promised gigabit internet, <laughs> yeah, promised. Promised. The key word there. <laughs> promised. So you know the time was now to pull those enthusiasts in. Uh, the first week it went live, uh, they cutely aired a nonstop pong marathon. Uh, once curiosity was then piqued, their lineup of fully original programming would hit. Uh, so. You guys want to run through the opening wave of 13 shows? Maybe a chat yep. for Campus a minute PD? or two about each? No, Campus that's way PD later. Campus PD was way later. Yeah. <laughs> and, Cheaters. And just for the record, <laughs> uh, to our listeners, we did take the time last week to sit down and revisit at least one episode of each one, uh, which was <laughs> very amusing as uh, some did hold up way better than others. All right, I don't, I don't know the sequence of how these went out hour to hour, so we'll just read them off alphabetically. Uh, starting with... Arena. Hell Banger. yeah. <laughs> yeah. This was their competitive multiplayer gaming show where teams of esports athletes would be pitted against each other in fierce contest. It was initially hosted by Will Wheaton and Travis Oates, with the tournament typically being done in three rounds on three different games through LAN. Uh, they'd even interview members of the said teams in between matches. And uh, what was also neat about it was that not all the games chosen were the obvious ones. Uh, I don't actually remember the details of the prize pool, but I'll, I'll tell you uh, uh, that that will come up again. Bragging rights. <laughs> yeah, to so you who... youngins, this is what we had before Twitch. <laughs> so who wants to explain the uh, seemingly normal one we uh, we watched? Anybody Which one? want to take that? The... Okay, I'll do it. Oh, okay. the episode. The one of the teams was named Teen Minority for the exact reason that you think they would be named Teen well, Minority. Hold on, what were the four represented races? Uh, white, Italian... <laughs> Like Puerto Rican and I think it was Asian. Asian, Asian yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was a lot of talk about what Ray Cheese person was, but also they interviewed the white guy a lot, which they, is they, he was kind of the spokesperson. <laughs> well, the, the white guy, not the Italian guy, who yeah. is also very much so white. Uh, <laughs> um, we couldn't figure out which was which at first, but the white guy had bleached blonde hair. I think. Yeah, yeah. and then the, yeah, that the made him stick out. Was it the other one was like Team Critical or something like that? Yeah, right. Something like so that. So they played. I think Minority might have been on the show. So the way a few times. the way Arena works is they play three games. Yeah. And it's like two like competitive games and then a console game in between. So in this episode, it was Capture the Flag in Unreal Tournament. 
Yeah. 2003. Team Minority versus Castaways. 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 That was okay, it. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> um, Unreal so, Tournament 2003 was the game? Yeah, yep. yeah. I think so. Capture the Flag in that. That would have aligned then, with the timeline. Then right? console game was Tekken 4? Yep, where Andrew? they played best of one, which, like, nobody does in any fighting <laughs> game ever. Hey, man, they only got 22 minutes, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, and then so then they played they played Tekken four, and then the last thing. This is why I said seemingly normal because we saw the thumbnail and just. Well, this is Andrew's fault because Andrew was like, "We have to get one of the episodes with the VR." Oh ring. right, yeah, yeah, it wasn't even the thumbnail. That was like, yeah. yeah, Andrew, you brought this up, and we searched for it, and yeah. it's the so they craziest have, shit. I've ever so seen. they play America's Army, but they don't play America's <laughs> Army competitively. What they did was they played. In these like beachhead looking VR rigs, <laughs> yeah, yeah, a co-op and, mission. But they played a co-op yeah. mission each, and I still don't know who won that. <laughs> <laughs> I was paying attention, yeah, enough. <laughs> But I don't know what happened or who did better or what the objective was. No, it was well, extremely so, tough yeah. to follow. Because yeah. they also did the thing where there was like a thumbnail-sized thing in the bottom of the game, and then they just show these right. dudes in these like weird like VR setups. So the objective was a uh, Black Hawk Down sort of scenario, but like in yeah. one of them right, there yeah, was, was like helicopter. friendly fire where they like immediately killed their teammate, and then the other one I think they just like left without completing the objective or something. So yeah, like for <laughs> what you said, it was hard to tell who won because they both failed in very different ways <laughs> yeah. yeah but the, and then they do like points so you get like two points for each of the pc games and one point for the console game and then two points for having the mvp on your team and then one point for something else mm -hmm. yeah, so who wait who won in the end of the episode between the two teams is anybody i couldn't tell you i couldn't tell you <laughs> we that. watched like, that whole thing like like they, <laughs> they, we got to hear them make jokes about being minorities and then like <laughs> I think yeah the, the fight and there was a dick really... joke around somebody's username too yeah oh yes yeah there was because they all have their own it was like, like oh, magic God. magic wand magic, or something magic, like that magic, magic, magic stick magic, it magic stick it has that to be magic stick because yeah. like that's the song was probably out of the <laughs> yeah time. yeah and they're like oh he's, he's working too much on his magic stick like something like that yeah oh, hilarious the... i think tame minority might have won and i think it was because the dude with the bleach tips got mvp <laughs> the, uh... but i don't remember <laughs> The VR thing was like that old VR style headset where it like you you literally had all the wires were hung from the ceiling. It came well, down that's to what, a yeah, helmet. That's why I also was like saying like the classic it does look the like classic you're... like this is gonna wipe your mind and they put the helmet on all the cords are coming <laughs> anybody, down. And but... if any of our listeners have seen the movie First Kid <laughs> with Sinbad, it's I like that. Even it's, seen that it's like that. Fun fact: so that <laughs> there's that a scene place, that where he plays VR in a mall. It's like that. <laughs> yeah, that place that they got the VR from Disney Quest. Yeah, no, R. that's where that's where it probably yeah. went to. No, they got it from uh, the Virtual Reality Arcade in Duluth, Georgia, which is still around today. Why do wow. I know that? Why? <laughs> Why do I know that? Because I remember the name Duluth, Georgia, like the place Duluth, Georgia, and. For whatever reason, like, uh, I was like, I got to see if this place is still around. It is. Uh, but, like, two weeks prior to that, I was I was looking at, like, the convention center in Duluth, Georgia, because, like, I, I don't know why. I cannot remember why. We live very different lives. We do. We do. I, there was, like, there was oh, some... After this pandemic, though, we got to, let's make we a trip gotta down go. to this, this We got to go. Place that's been there for Yeah, it's still in business. Decades. But I imagine that they didn't play each other because... They didn't have enough VR headsets or VR. Yeah, VR, uh, I think you might have mentioned kids. that at the time because there were there's only there's three. Only, I think there's right? four. three or four. Oh, there are four. There yeah. was like it, teams of four. Or it was a team of five. It should also be mentioned that this was not the first season. No, because, because it was Kevin. Per, it was Kevin Pereira, not Will Wheaton. Uh oh, right? was it Kevin Pereira? On, yeah. No, I thought it was the uh, the big buff dude. They were both him there. and oh, they, okay, were, they both were both there. there. Okay, we'll the, get the to him. The two guys as well. you mentioned weren't there. It was big buff so, dude and Kevin Pereira. Not loud. The, yeah. the best. The best was when like the big buff dude was like, "Now onto the co-host. You take a big dog, whoop whoop, Kevin." And he's just like, <laughs> "Uh, thanks." That, that guy does look like a drill sergeant. I don't... <laughs> well, no, the best. The best is like the fake army guy. They got to give like the oh yeah the the recap of the Black Hawk Down mission that they're going to be on. <laughs> And we're just sitting there like, wait a minute, I know that guy. He pumped my gas earlier this week. <laughs> like, that guy served me coffee. Yeah. And then they're like, now going to our field reporter who's two feet away. Yep. And there's this woman in a scarf. And she's just like, so what? How do, why do you think you won Unreal Tournament? He's like, I don't know. I just play it like 30 hours a week. 
which is great. <laughs> oh, I just quit my job for it. So, yeah. like, <laughs> dropped out of school. And... Mm-hmm. <laughs> so then there was the lesser known Blister, uh, hosted by warm up comedian Bill uh, Singlair. Um, it, its focus was on action adventure games, uh, like it was previews, reviews, uh, and conversations with their designers. Uh, this one was all right. I uh, I probably would have been into it more if I caught it regularly. And uh, and oh, this this apparently was the um, the show that kicked it off after the Pong Marathon too. Um, the episode of this that we watched. Um, Wait, you're telling me the professional warm up comedian was the person warming up the channel? After the Pong Marathon, uh, that I get, yeah, I guess that, that you no, know, you're right. That Makes is, sense. <laughs> that does. <laughs> so they covered a swarth of some neat shit. Um, it was it was snappy, well edited, a bit more professional than some of the other stuff. Uh, I also believe this was the one where Andrew pointed out how much the dude sounded like actor Ezra Miller. Is this that I, one? I could be wrong. Yeah. I was uh, yeah. <laughs> the one that was like a Nintendo Direct t- a decade yes. and a half prior. Yes. Where he's just like, here's Clock Tower Three. Clock Tower Two was point and click, but this one. <laughs> And then they like played like half the game, and the dude's like explaining every mechanic, and you're like, "Oh my god, I get it." <laughs> so uh, next up was cheat. Uh, this one kind of self-explanatory, as it was all about code strategies and hidden secrets in games. Uh, it was originally hosted by Corey Rouse. I did check uh, into cheat uh, a few times. Uh, anyone remember uh, a, a bit of the episode we checked out for that one? Uh, or yeah, talk? absolutely. Tony Hawk All... and then more Tony Hawk. Uh, yeah, there was a lot. Tony again, Hawk. each each version. Like, cause yep. that was the era when like the PS2, GameCube, and Xbox had different cheat codes. Yeah. I guess, uh, and I if if, it, if it's not already obvious, this is uh, I, this is the time before achievements and leaderboards. Yep. And mm-hmm. I remember specifically. This is probably the last set uh, or gener- their generation or. Yeah, well, like, 360 was yeah. the online yeah. achievement. I, I, all yeah. I remember Sheets is every thing. single time they got done with their spiel and would go to commercial break, they'd be like, to see the cheats in this episode, visit g4tv.com oh, yeah. plus cheats. And Andrew just goes, so why does the show I, exist? Why then? did I watch the show? I can just go on the site and look up the cheats for the game I actually like. Yeah. Care about. yeah. And Game Facts was already a thing by the time the show started. Uh, yep, it was. Yep. Yeah. Even on dial-up, even on dial-up, you could access it pretty easily and quickly. <laughs> hey, you can even scroll through Tips and Tricks magazine. I will, I like the one thing though. Uh, I. They didn't always just do codes. They also was like, here's how you win in Halo 2. And then it felt like they were they were pivoting away from that because it's like, OK, yeah, uh, cheat codes are becoming less of a thing. And the show has less of a reason to exist uh, if we focus just on cheat codes, you know? Um, yeah. 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 It, it was it. was cheat the one where they gave the full rundown of like essentially how to beat Ratchet and Clank from start to finish. And it was yeah. Like five minutes. Yeah. <clears throat> And they're like, well, first you got to do this, head to this planet, everything. then you got to do this and grab this and pay 500 yeah. bolts, which you could get like this. And then <laughs> they literally gave a rundown of like how to beat Ratchet and Clank, but they summarized it in like two minutes, but it was just so... Like the whole... But like, mm-hmm. you wouldn't understand what they were talking about unless you had actually played the game. Yeah. Because they're like... Because <laughs> I was even struggling. I was like... What planet are they going yeah, to? Yeah, like what I played you? this game and I was I, I guess they expect you to TiVo it and like pause yeah. it and slow, like, <laughs> yeah, well, like not know. only that, but that game shows you like objective markers on your map. You're not really gonna get lost trying to figure out how to beat Ratchet and Clank. Yeah. <laughs> That's also true. But I guess if I if I did want to know, I could always just go to their website. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I enjoyed it, um, but not nearly as much as what I'm about to say. Uh, without irony, might be my favorite use of an open television block ever, Cinematech. A wonderful collection of various uh, game cutscenes, trailers, and other random B-roll, each put together in a scrolling video showcase. Uh, usually was shown later at night, uh, and was the only program of theirs not to use a host or a narration. Uh, with, well, with one notable exception, <laughs> um, uh, the, the episode that we watched. Um, but it, uh, it often included titles from any era on any platform. Uh, I loved it. It was uh, the best thing ever to fall asleep to. <laughs> it's it's ingenious, really. Yeah. Because it's you're getting 30 minutes of programming out of essentially, like, somebody went in After Effects for 20 minutes. Yeah. yeah. And, like... It had to be so inexpensive to produce. Now, and... now it's fun to watch because you're like, oh, man, remember that game? But at the time, it was like, I couldn't just i couldn't like just go on twitter and see a company post a trailer totally so i did yeah. discover games through cinema me too like because yeah. a lot of their 
programming was very focused on the lines of like, here's what's coming. <clears throat> And Cinematech was like, here's what's already happened. Yeah. And when you're fucking 12. Maybe you missed it. And all, you know, this is like, you you haven't had video games for a lot of your life. And you didn't have disposable income for a lot of your life. You didn't go around finding weird shit. And they're just like, here's this weird shmup that came out 10 years ago. And you're like, <laughs> yeah, oh. Yeah, you're like, what the fuck oh, is that? Hell yeah. Check that out. There's, yeah. it, like, the other thing about that show, though, is that because they showed mostly trailers, it was kind of like a whole string of commercials. But they were like commercials you were seeking out, I guess, if you were yeah, leaving exactly. the channel yeah. on. But then they go to commercial breaks in the middle of all these commercials. It's like when <laughs> Skyrim was coming out, you might intentionally go to the YouTube trailer for Skyrim, and then the pre-roll ad would be that same trailer that you were navigating to. That's what it felt uh like. I, saw, you know? I, I was going to say, that's happened to me now, though, where I want to look up a trailer for a movie and then I get an ad on, on YouTube. But yeah. and it, you're just like, I'm I'm already searching out your ad to watch. Yeah. Yes, I'm, I'm yeah. voluntarily watching an ad. Don't give me an ad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How about another ad? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it. And I, some I segments it. of the show are also longer than others. So there'd, there'd be ones yeah. that were like a few, like a minute, but other ones that... I, I appreciate that they the, uh, didn't go the route that every other TV channel did, which was they f typically TV channels would fill that time block with infomercials. Yeah. Right. Like late night infomercials were essentially free ad revenue because, you know, whatever company was hawking some snake oil yeah. at three o'clock in the morning to get every insomniac that was delusional to call in. Right. And trust me, I know that they were insomniac insomniacs and del and delusional. Because I was once the person on the receiving end of that phone call. How many for one of my jobs of Girls Gone Wild do you have? No, but I, uh, that's a story for another collection. time. But I definitely have sold <laughs> Sham Wow and Clear Wins Dual Action Cleanse, the Total Body Purifier, and Colon Cleanser. Uh, <laughs> and I am—I could tell you, hands down, and Procera the Mind Supplement, that the best calls that you ever See, got mind were overnight. Uh, yeah, you course. ever see Limitless? It's like <laughs> yeah, that. it's like that. <laughs> um... The, first of all, G4 did have infomercials. Did they? As an insomniac. Oh, I was like, they mo I was going to say, we're going to get into it. But there was like ran... 4 a.m. Okay. Uh, that's pretty late. The later time. Because Comedy slot. Central was like, 1 a.m., it's time to yep. they buy this book reruns. on how to resell houses or whatever. I, I guess I'm, I'm surprised that Twitch doesn't have an official channel that's just something like this. That's just infomercials? No, <laughs> God damn it. That's just all footage of, of just you know, random games that are available and out. And it's just like, even if you did a thing where it's like that you could link to a store page to buy it or just like, yeah, I would, I would put that on at night when I was passing out. Um, but it, it breaks my heart how many of those old episodes of Cinematech are still missing to this day, which, uh, unfortunately will be a running theme with, uh, most of the stuff. They found a lot of them. They did. And the, the people are trying to, to like, it's it's the earliest era of them that are yeah those are long be, uh, gone to time unless someone has a VHS copy like the later ones yeah. they found and put on archive.net like someone went into the archive went into the actual archive of G4 mm -hmm. and found the footage for it which was really cool uh, and was also 44 gigabytes Yes, uh, I know. I torrented and, that motherfucker. Yeah, and, and <laughs> of course, there's like two seaters on it. When we're trying I was to talking it. to Chris about this <laughs> not too long ago. Mark my words: if G4 comes back and they put old G4 shit on Peacock, I will sign up for. Peacock. I would too. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. It, absolutely. I mean, what resolution like, here's did they film that stuff? Yeah, in? Here's every episode we've, of Cinema Tech. We've in never seen it in HD yeah. like ever. Yeah, yeah like it's uh, and the the la if I haven't already said it, the um uh, <laughs> this was probably their most. Uh, like their cheapest, yeah, uh, of course, pro, yeah. yeah, because it was a, so a good portion of the captured footage came from interns working on the channel's other content. So it's like, it, like they'd have to play games for X play reviews or something, and then they they could retool it. What for music this. did they use in the background of Cinema Tech? A lot of it was dope. It, some of it would just be like stuff from other games. I, like at first, I thought it was like royalty free, just like electronic or music. Oh no, they're just like taking songs from like this game, and then they're just overlaying with footage of this game, and it works. Like they're kind of synced up. It's almost like their own music videos, like. <laughs> But it was it was neat. Cinemateku. <laughs> Cinemateku. Oh, we can talk about <laughs> nocturnal so, emissions. Uh, not, yet. not yet. We'll get there. <laughs> oh, okay. okay cool. So I I know the uh, the quote uh, 1998 greatest year in gaming episode was the one that we watched, uh, which 
and and that that's sweet. I like that. It, even if it was far from what that that show typically was. I mean, we've all seen um, a yeah. lot of cinema tech. Well, yeah, exactly. So. Which is you know why we, we had to watch the one. one that was different. And, yeah, and just... then and cut with a whole bunch of interviews of of pe- figures that we still yeah. follow. You know, to this day. So another one I quite dug was uh, was Filter, uh, a show that counted down top ten lists for numerous game related topics. Uh, some were genre based, some were character based, others were more specific. Uh, it was first hosted by actress Diane uh, Miz- Mizoda. You're in the ballpark. Okay. <laughs> uh, who allowed uh, registered users to cast their votes on the featured list? Uh, I never got to submit. <sighs> So who wants to tell everyone the episode of this uh, that you guys insisted on putting on? Top 10 bad girls. <laughs> Top 10 dominatrix characters. Uh, no, that's, so what they, that's what they wanted, wanted to believe. This, is, this was Chelsea's fault. But I, yeah, Previous I kind of do blame Chelsea. Chelsea for this, but that she, she wasn't alone. Oh, I, I backed her up, <laughs> but I'm still going to put the blame on her, you know? Because I, I, I also th- picked this le- this episode <laughs> because we knew it was going to we knew it was going to age poorly and boy were yeah. we right. <laughs> it's just funny because the the bulk of filter is was much more respectable than that. It's 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 akin to like a you know a watch mojo, but this was straight up like they're interviewing these awkward dudes at a GameStop about like that's, that's it was not EB even games. It was crazy. It was EB oh, games. It was EB games. It's sponsored it's, by EB games. Right. The premise they they were doing filming for the countdown. At the Harley Davidson, right? Yeah, she, she was leaning on a motorcycle the store. For them. She has fake tattoos on. Uh, <laughs> they, she's doing this countdown of the top ten bad girls. Which bad is meant is, to, you know, is the? I don't think people say things are like in the power glove. It's so bad anymore. But it's like it's bad, like, bad like bad girls. Like they got. They'll like they'll put you in your place, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Who was well, on almost that? like a domination? Jill Valentine, Jill Valentine, Samus Aran, Lara mm-hmm. Croft, uh, that the, the that one lesbian was... from Fear Effect. Yes, yeah, she's <laughs> a lesbian, and that's that's all anyone Final, knows about. That's all her. anyone, yeah. One that's of the, knows about that game, unfortunately. One of the female protagonists from Final Fantasy Seven. Ten. Ten. Because they it, was, picked, it wasn't ten. not did, seven. Yeah, they yeah, didn't yeah. pick Tifa. They didn't pick Aerith. They picked Lulu. They didn't even pick Yuna. <laughs> or Riku from the ones that were in Final Fantasy X-2. They picked was, L- Lulu because she's a goth. Wh- I'm trying to think of... What, who was the number one? Yeah. Samus. Samus was number one? No, Jill. Jill no, Jill no. was... Because uh, one, no, one part of filter that we have to mention is that when they get to the one and two spot, they do a filter face-off <laughs> where people <laughs> talk about who should be number one, and I don't... I think it was Jill. No. no, it was no. Chun Li. It was between yeah. Chun Li and Samus. It was okay. Chun Li. Jill was. Well, no, Ivy, Jill Ivy was, was on there, I think, as well. Right? Ivy was on there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ivy and Jill were both. You're on right. The list, it was. It was. It was mm-hmm. between Samus and Chun Li. Chun Li. Yep. And they and the, the the all the Samus talk was you know. <laughs> I played Metroid One, and then when when her armor burst off at the end, and it was Lady, I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then <laughs> Chun Li was like, she's a cop, and she can crush my head with her thighs. Hell yeah. The, the interviewees included my favorite was the guy who was clearly a professional in the industry, and when they were trying to goad him into saying <laughs> like Chun Li, Chun Li thick, he was just like. Uh, Chun Li has respectable qualities that would make her a great martial artist. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the great. British guy, yeah, he was so good at maneuvering <laughs> it. And then they had the the dude from EB Games who was just like, who would just, they must have found that guy, and they're just like, this this is it, this is this is our fucking <laughs> yeah. bottomless well of interviewees for this show because he's he said anything they wanted. Yeah, he's just like, sign this release. And he's just like, lo- you know, Jill's got everything. You know, she's strong. She's a cop, but then like. She knows when to be scared, you know? Like, <laughs> I wouldn't mind her arresting me. <laughs> yeah, it was shit like that. Had, was Blood one... Rain on there? No, no. Blood Rain would have made a I lot remember, more sense because they used the word dominatrix like 12 times, and yeah. I was like, where the hell's Blood Rain? <laughs> that, that super lanky dude who was just talking about who was just talking about dominatrix and getting beat up by women in every <laughs> single one. Dude, that tall lady from Resident Evil Village is going to blow his fucking mind. Oh, dude, it Chris, already has. Chris, I just got to correct you on one part, though, is that they did have one female representative that they interviewed in the whole thing, and it was some yes. other random shopper at an EB Games. And it yeah. was always oh, and like, no, look, we're not sexist because we're asking her uh, her opinion uh, but as well. They were asking her about the, the clothing yeah. all the time. Yeah. She was like, oh, yeah, the, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> like... 
Why? <laughs> Sorry, it was laughing. watch mojo laughing in the chat bottle there. Like just I will say to a million. So after we watched that, Randy uh, went on his tirade about. He's like, "You guys made me pick the worst episode of the show. It's a lot better than that." <laughs> so I went back and I watched another episode, which was top ten comic book video games. Oh yeah, okay. which was better in the fact that it wasn't. It didn't. <laughs> it aged very poorly in a much different way. Well, sure. <laughs> because this is. Keep in mind, top 10 comic book games before Marvel vs. Capcom 3 existed, <laughs> before the Arkham games existed, before the new Spider-Man games existed. Yeah. So I think or number... X-Men or, or Wolverine Uncaged Edition. Yeah, existed. I think uh, number one might have been the X-Men arcade game, and number two was Spider-Man 2. Yeah. Okay. But they had like the Dark, the the, or like the Batman Begins video game that EA made. Oh, and which was terrible. That's awful. Yeah, like, but yeah. at the time, it probably was one of the ten best comic books. Sure. Games. Uh, <laughs> when, I mean, when was Arkham of, Asylum 2009? Yeah, a few Teenage Mutant years. Ninja Turtle games. But they had like interstitials, and those were so good. <laughs> if they had like cell phone reviews. It was like Tech TV brings you cell phone reviews, <laughs> and it was like this dude inter- like reviewing like a Palm Pilot, and he's like, "You can do anything. Check your email. <laughs> <laughs> Even browse the web." And it's like this pixelated screen that just says like eBay. On on it it was oh and then they did like uh the top three the top three web i think i sent you guys this in the discord it was like the top three websites on the internet as of this episode oh yeah and it was um homestar runner red versus yes. blue.com and then runescape.com was number one if you can see my face right now yeah. I, was, I was i i was convinced it'd be ask jeeves yeah. <laughs> see what did i tell you dignified yeah <laughs> Certainly. No mini clip? <laughs> yeah, miniclips.com. <laughs> Newgrounds. Uh, then there's Game On, which I think I only ever saw parts of. It was a travel game show where hosts Randy Kagan and Matt uh, Gallant would invite people right off the street to compete against each other in selected video games. The pair would then choose a side and bet on who they thought was going to win while the person who later lost uh, would have to perform a public humiliation. And those uh, two guys so- went on to form Salty Bet. No, that's not <laughs> That's kind of like a more wholesome guy game. It, which, it sounded fun. I wish we could have found it, but episodes of this thing appear to not exist online anywhere. Uh, not even just clips. <laughs> though the name uh, doesn't help, I will say. Like, Game On is a kind yeah. of generic, right. like... SEO yeah. wasn't on anybody's mind back then. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, it's talk show time now with uh, the simply titled G4.com. It was first run by Tina Wood. and That's G4TV.com? Uh, G4TV.com, sorry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you're right. Uh, it was run by Tina Wood, uh, a pseudo alumni, Laura Foy, and Scott Rubin. Uh, Scott being in charge of that all games network uh, previously. Here they would sit down and uh, discuss a topic every week about something happening in the gaming community. Uh, Just like us. Um, Not like us, though, uh, at least not yet. They would get to bring in representatives from the industry into their studio to to talk to. Um, Although the most notable element of the program was that it was interactive, with the channel's official forums being incorporated into a live chat system. They'd uh, read posts, take calls, run polls, things Mm -hmm. like that. Um, the episode we watched was a little later in its run during the launch of the Xbox 360. Uh, we saw young Jeff Keighley hanging out. Um, it also happened to be one where everybody wouldn't stop talking about sequels and the lack of new (laughs) franchises, which is especially hilarious when looking back on it through the lens of today. (laughs) So to our audience, by the way, you say talk show. Yeah, but I don't think that does it justice because it's not a talk show. It's not like Conan or yeah, sorry, not fucking, a late night it's talk like, show. Uh, it's, it's a panel. It's, it's, it's a panel show like okay. CNN. Yeah, yeah. like fucking, I was gonna say like a radio show, like fucking okay. Crossfire. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking weird. It's it's like watching like a CNN thing where they're like, we brought on a Democrat and we brought on a Republican. Let's talk about gun control. But instead, <laughs> they're like, I like sequels. And the other person's like, I don't. And then they're like, let's talk about the Xbox. <laughs> it's, it's weird. It, it was weird, but I like it. Was that the one where we saw that they were talking about? Uh, oh, wait. No, never mind. I'm jumping ahead to a different show. I almost confused <laughs> it with, uh, with Pulse also, coming up. We'll talk about that later. This, yes. Pulse is coming this up. is the one where they, they had the interview with... The guy that made Genji, right? Yes. 
Yeah, and they showed gameplay Crimes. of Genji. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> everyone's favorite. Sony and he was like, fans. "Anamusha was really good. Why does this look like shit?" And it's like, I don't know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, so Icons was rad. Uh, this was a documentary-style show that covered significant figureheads in games, as well as other dives into companies, products, characters, history, and industry milestones. Uh, this actually would be the one that <laughs> likely resembles what we do the closest. Yeah, I was going to say um, Hot Button, the TV show, <laughs> with uh, less or more dick jokes, depending on which episode you watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We should try and find uh, more of these sometime. To, yeah, and steal them. To check out. No. <laughs> they're, they're, actually, they're, they're very easy to find because there's just a yes. yeah. D4 yeah. TV icons channel. Yeah. <laughs> Which is good. I know they uh, they did episodes on uh, devs and stories that we have covered before, though. What did mm -hmm. we like, watch? And 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 those episodes are now outdated, which is the funny part, too, because it's yeah, like, yeah. the history of Valve. But it's like, fortunately, they're never going to take six years to make a new game ever again. Here's Half-Life <laughs> 2. It's out now. They fixed their whole development process. <laughs> you know, like stuff like that, or like, man, everyone on the planet is trying to play Doom Three right now, and you're like, yeah, of course, like this will be the the best Doom yet. So some are probably a bit more timeless. So, like they did an ESRB uh, one. There's a Shigeru Miyamoto one. Which and, one did we watch? Uh, so I, w I was going to ask who wanted to dis uh, talk about this. We watched, I don't remember was, which icons we watched. This it was is, one of the early ones. This is how we started off our marathon. Yeah, yeah. It was the uh, the history of fighting games. Yep. Right. That was great. Yeah. 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 Okay. Which was really cool. Like uh, they like. All right, Andrew, you want to take this one? Do you remember it enough? Yeah. Uh, I, so here's the thing. I know a lot of history of fighting games, but I don't remember 100% exactly what they covered and which parts I'd be filling in with just other things that I know. <laughs> okay. Do you uh, remember how I'll, current I'll, they I'll, went? They, they, so they definitely, they, went, they definitely covered Street Fighter 2 and Mortal Kombat, yep. for sure. I guarantee oh, you. Oh, yeah. yeah. They went uh, up and, to and I think they got into... Soul Calibur and Dead or Alive into was the like 3D. where it ended. <laughs> Because yeah. didn't they do? I did they make a comment about how 3D fighting games were like the yeah 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 they were like, they were they were like the fuck they Street were. Fighter and Mortal yeah, Kombat yeah, totally. here's Tekken and <laughs> well, because like, mm. Mortal Kombat went 3D at that point Street Fighter yes. had Street Fighter EX coming around those times and uh, mm -hmm. and yeah there wouldn't be a fourth Street Fighter for years after that you know that went back to 2D. Uh, so yeah, that was where everything was headed back then. It was, it was just frozen at this moment in time where everybody was like, "Why would we do a two D fighter?" They did like they did like uh, karate champs. That was, I think, yeah, I think that it might and have then been the, Yeri, the fight, like... Yeri Kung Fu, and then Street Fighter One, and then Street Fighter Two, Mortal Kombat, Virtual Fighter, Virtual Fighter, and Tekken. then they talked about Tekken, and then they talked about Street Fighter Two. Three, Street Fighter 3, I mean, and then they started talking about Soul Calibur and Dead or Alive, and then I think it kind of ended in the, <laughs> and it kind of ended where they're like, yep, 3D fighting games are here to stay, everybody. Yeah. And then, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, we'll, they're not 100% wrong, it's just kind no, of just but... Soul Calibur and Tekken at this point. Dead or yeah. Alive, who knows what's going to happen with that series. Oh, wait, no, I take that back. Virtual Fighter's coming back in some capacity. Was that a confirmed, like, or was that just a out... rumor? No, it's not a rumor. They're putting out, like, Virtua Fighter 5 again, but, like, made esports viable or something? Oh, right. They did that with Puyo Puyo. It's, like, esports edition or something. Right. It's, like, not fully fleshed out exactly what they're going to do, but it's going to be Virtua Fighter 5 in some way. Oh, right. Which, of course, is by, by this point, is, is like, a, a pretty old fighting game, but... Um, Go back but to that, like, graphical... Lot, so style that you can play <laughs> virtual fighter 5 in yakuza like a dragon that's correct oh, right right mm -hmm. yeah uh, they still have the afterburner in there mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome um so uh, uh here's another popular one uh judgment day uh it hosted reviews by another duo with uh, victor lucas and veteran composer tommy tallarico uh both these guys were by no means strangers to the field as lucas was the creator of electric playground back in the mid 90s uh, a show uh, we also watched uh, an an app of yeah that, yeah so yeah. they they reviewed tech gear movies comics and software, um, in fact, a Judgment Day is more or less a spinoff of a segment within Electric Playground called Reviews on the Run mm -hmm. that uh, Tommy was a part of with Lucas. Uh, execs from G Four were fond of the format and picked it up so they could expand it into a full thirty minutes. Um, now does uh, does 
I mean, and reviews on the run might have come back also after Judgment mm-hmm. Day was canceled. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so does anybody remember uh, what was scored on the episode we watched? It was interesting going back to it and seeing how much kind of quicker it was in terms of like an X play with just how many things they could cover in. Yeah, was it like a it licensed racing minutes. game, like a Rugrats racer or something? Wasn't there something like that? Oh, no, that was three racers. Re- <laughs> that was reviews on the run, wasn't it? Oh, that okay. might have been the one we saw with the, rev- the reviews player. on the run. We saw was all kart racers. Yeah. Oh right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Judgment Day was the one where the the face off that they had was between uh, a CSI, CSI game and a Law and Order and, game. Yeah, yeah, and that's pretty order. funny because yeah. they reviewed psyops. <laughs> Yep. Um, oh, yeah, we saw we saw that. We watched a small clip where they reviewed Vin Diesel in Triple X. <laughs> no, it was um, it was, uh, Riddick. Chronicles Riddick. Yeah, Chronicles of Riddick. Riddick. You're right. And then Driver Three. Yep, I think Driver Three. Yeah, it was and in then there. they also reviewed. Um, they were reviewed. The, they reviewed there? a Game Boy Advance SP that looked like the fa- uh, oh the NES, the NES. one. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember that. But the plot being that these guys are like. They fight about everything, so you get like two contrasting opinions. About. Yeah, you get, you get, you get. They talk about the game a while. One of them says, "I like this," and then the other guy goes, "Well, I don't really like that so much." And then you get a pros and a cons list, and then two review scores. And the I pro remember. and the con are always it's too dark. Too dark. It's <laughs> yeah. too dark. That's right. That was the funniest. In Chronicles of Riddick, they're like. The lighting in this game is beautiful, but it's way too dark. And I was like, well, that's kind of lighting, right? <laughs> like, I feel like those those are kind of contradictory pros and cons, but sure. <laughs> you do whatever you got to do. No, that was a cool show, though. Uh, so this, this next one is a little strange. Um, did any of you ever watch Portal? We totally missed this one in it. our viewings. Yeah, you know, it's a really God good game. It. Yeah, no, like, it's yeah. an amazing. Yeah, there's then like, they made a sequel that was even better. There's a cape, um, but like it's a lie. The whole thing. <laughs> so it it says it was a comedy drama series <clears throat> about MMOs, hosted by Dave Meinstein, that used machinima and voice actors to make skits and tell stories. So can we watch this? Can we watch this after? <laughs> we can. I, I never saw it, but I do find it. Like, it sounds like uh, what's the Felicia Day show? Uh, the oh, guild? The, the, the guild. The guild. Yeah, it sounds like the guild. Did they? Well, the guild. Did the guild do stuff within the game? Sometimes. I was, oh, I never. I was like, I always thought it was outside of it. So, well, they, the, the, fun, the funny thing about this is that they technically beat Red versus Blue to the trend a whole year early. Hmm. Um, no clue if that played an influence on that or not. But well, um, I know. Um, you know, we'll get to X play later. But I know post Red versus Blue. X Play had a, uh, a Chaos Theory co-op machinima thing that they would do. Yes, from time oh, to time. those because they the, we one of the episodes we watched the Game of the Year X Play ones was the two of them in character talking about oh, yeah. the games of that year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I forget what their names were, but Special Agent Bob and Secret Agent Steve or something like that. I'm really close. <laughs> those are good. Things. I'm glad you remember. Yeah. <laughs> All right, now I know we didn't manage to find a full one of uh, these either as well, uh, but players with a dollar sign. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> 30 Seconds to Mars really likes Hitman. <laughs> That's my review. It essentially But was... Jared Leto does not like video games. <laughs> he does not like me. He wasn't no. even there. He's just like No, and they are they yeah, they were very broy and kept making fun of each other for having to put on makeup, makeup. to go on live television. Yeah. yeah. So if you haven't already guessed, it essentially was a show uh where <laughs> like I guess you would meet up and talk with um famous celebrities who were known to play games. Uh, supposedly Alec Baldwin was on it, Robin Williams, which makes sense, uh, Vin mm-hmm. Diesel, of course, was, uh, was David Ozzie Arquette, and the Bare Naked Ladies. <laughs> was Ozzy Osbourne ever on it? Uh, potentially, yeah. I, I, I haven't actually been able to locate, like, a list. Like, I, mm. I found, like, episode numbers, but it doesn't say who they are, because the, right. the, the segment that we watched, the, the 30 Seconds to Mars one was, like, six minutes, so it wasn't a whole episode oh boy was it a six minute yeah <laughs> Man, every bit of that long six minutes they they really packed that six minutes full of just <laughs> entertainment man jared leto showed up he said his name was lucifer and then he disappeared and then reappeared at the end and it was just two of the other lesser known guys from the bands just like saying nothing <laughs> yeah they're just like 
They're just like wrestling, and then he's like, "Ha, hey, idiot! You got to put makeup on." And then they go to play Hitman Two, and the yeah. cut—they can't skip the cutscene. <laughs> and he's like, "Fuck you, IO Interactive! I got—I got to be on TV in five minutes. I want to kill somebody." Ah, <laughs> uh, what a show! It's—it's uh, it's just great. Oh man, yeah. I—I uh, I, I got to do a uh, like a <laughs> a torrent of just the rest of Lucas. <laughs> Don't uh, do that to yourself. See if they're all truly as cringy. No, I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> now we got Pulse. Um, this was out there fairly easily. Uh, it was basically a pre-recorded weekly news show about what was going down in the world of video. Uh, the Anchors, uh, where Patrick Clark and Ronnie Lynn Riley, and um, they, they would kind of recap all the top stories in a single handy place to catch up on what was reported. Uh, announcements, cancellations, um, closures, launches, right. things like that. And th- the one we found was was wild. Uh, I got to say, like, they really do just blaze through a ton of it's shit a, in one, <laughs> like, it, it, one episode. It looks like the local news. It, is, it absolutely is local. And the that setting is a bit strange in yeah. re- retrospect. But, yeah, like, like literally, like, uh, uh, hands folded on mm-hmm. the on the desk, and, and this just, week like, in Xbox news, the yeah. Xbox, the Project Xenon yeah. has reportedly been started and will be revealed soon. And it's like, <laughs> it's contra- so professional. Contrast that with like every like every outlet does like weekly news. Like IGN has the Daily Fix and yeah. stuff like that. They're but, very like, personality driven, and but yeah, it's just like up high energy. It's like jokes and like. And yeah. yeah, very high energy, and this is just like, and this week. It's like you expect yeah. them to be like, 13 is coming out soon. Also, Syria has entered into a war with <laughs> Russia. Like, <laughs> you just, like, expect, like, that, that fucking cadence. Guys, uh, correct coffee. me if I'm wrong, though. Wasn't this the most of an era episode of Pulse that we could have possibly seen? Oh, because, my God. And, and again, cor- correct incredible. me if I'm getting any of this wrong, but I believe that the things that they mentioned in the news were the Phantom Console... Uh, yes. An announcement of Shenmue three and yes. Half Life two coming out soon. Yeah. We're all just like yeah. back to this back. This was the one because they this were saying the that Half Life two is coming exclusively to Steam. Yeah, this and, is the one where yeah, they're like right, Valve yeah. is launching yeah. their Steam platform. Yeah. And we're like, <laughs> we all just burst it out yes. laughing. Yeah. Uh, and and also equally perfect. successful platform for PC games, the Phantom. <laughs> yes. <laughs> The most uh, just apt name for a console ever, but I disappeared from existence. <laughs> Didn't they also say that uh, they were talking about uh, the what was the a cameo as being like it was a, a game a game game? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was that was Electric Playground, I think, right? Oh, uh, was were, it? It okay. was an E3 episode. I might have got Electric the two Playground. Yeah. But th- this one, this was definitely the most like professional and highbrow. You know what I mean? Like very quiet and dignified, which seems to could have counter their. Yeah. Philosophy of what the, but it, it, I don't know, it totally did. It, but it, not really, though. It like, made sense. I mean, if, for if you're going for that MTV style, like they did thing, stuff like this too. That's a good point. But like the, I don't know. Are you done with the lineup, or are there more shows to There's, go? There's uh, only a couple more. It wasn't like players is the most MTV wacky off the wall idea. Yeah. The rest of it's pretty, yeah, different. It, like it's yeah. not crazy yet. Yeah, I would describe it as like almost a breath of fresh air, and yeah, almost it's like calm down. Almost like, okay, yeah, we get celebrities to play games; they're fucking crazy. We find people to play against each other in arena shooters, like with with wild names. Yeah. But then it's like, oh, like hard video game journalism. Let's treat it with professionalism. Yeah, like yeah. So it's no, like, you're right. It it, 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 it would have yeah. made more of a mockery to like have some wild or wacky antic go on in the background. Yeah. While they're trying to relay the news, which under like it, it was it was it was just funny cuz it was like I feel like I might would may have been a little bit bored by this when I was younger, but while going back to now I was like actually I, I would wa- like if this was a show it. now, I was like I'd like this <laughs> cuz it, it a weird a weird level of respect for the the audience that they're Exactly. Trying yeah. to cater to. It was not handholdy at all. Yeah. It was like yeah. And it was not like looking back at the end of G4, which I'm sure you'll get to, <laughs> yes. and what like what X play eventually sort of morphed into, and what Attack, Attack of, of the, the Show became, and what yeah. their original programming looked like after they realized that video games was like I, after the dawn of the internet. It, I it, feel it like was this was maybe also the program you would show to higher ups to try and make them understand the industry more. Yes, or, like, 
Uh, so this is funny. Next on the list uh, is Sweat. Something I know I, uh, I didn't watch as it was strictly devoted to sports titles. Uh, not a lot for me to recount here. I'm sorry. We honestly Except didn't that the even, show sucked. We didn't even finish the episode it was, we it chose. It was wild that they put a three-hour show on cable television. <laughs> yeah, I was, if, if anyone wants to elaborate on... It was 22 minutes. It just felt like three hours. Yeah. It was backstage at like a WWE event, right? Yep. Was it WrestleMania? I think it was WrestleMania. It was WrestleMania. Yeah. It was like it was a cross between they were trying to interview both the people who are obviously incorporated into the game, so sports figures and WWE wrestlers. Yeah. It was like the behind the scenes to like the promotional activity. So it was like the wrestlers who were gonna be wrestling WrestleMania showed up to do a press conference and meet the fans. And yeah. also they had the WrestleMania game there where like people <laughs> who clearly don't play video games were like aka the wrestlers had to like demo it and promote it. Yeah. And it was just kind of a mess. <laughs> yeah. We it skipped, was a little we skipped unfocused. Through, we skipped through a lot of this. Yeah. I don't think we watched the whole thing. Or no, we were going to stop, and then Andrew was like, wait, get to the end and see if it gets good. And then it didn't. <laughs> and, then it didn't. <laughs> and last but not least, out of our premiere batch, was Starcade, uh, A more obscure one again, I feel, for younger people, considering it was just reruns of an old 80s arcade show. That wasn't Nick Arcade. Um, so I guess not totally original uh, with this in there, which is why it wasn't on our list last week. But uh, I digress. We should watch it. <laughs> See, they did have to fill every open slot since the channel ran 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, this led to loads and loads of reruns for the folks that weren't able to tune in uh, before. Also, there uh, <laughs> there were obviously plenty of noteworthy emissions from this lineup. Uh, I already know what you're thinking, but don't worry. Those will come later. I wouldn't forget the key programs, uh, nor the staff changes of the stuff I already mentioned. Of these, though, um, just real quick, what do you guys think was the best? In the mindset of 2021. Uh, oh, um, God. Cinematech. <laughs> <laughs> Hell I love, yeah. I love Cinematech. But, uh, <laughs> I'll just excluding, say no, my answer Excluding is. Cinematech. Excluding because Cinematech. Because it's so, it's so different. Yeah. Like, of the hosted shows. I might have seen. Judgment Day? Yeah. Jud- I, Judgment I'd Day. I'd probably is also go Judgment Day. Because, yeah. like. I liked X Play a lot, but uh, there was a Me period too. where X Play got bad, you know, and like yeah. Justin Day didn't have that period. It the highs weren't as high, but the lows weren't as low. Yeah, that that's fair. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I like the 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 serious ask news one. Yeah, Pulse is Pulse. absolutely up there for me. Yeah, uh, as well. Uh, that's excluding Cinematech and by proxy, Nocturnal Emissions. <laughs> God damn it! Uh, then yeah. I mean, of course, of course, of course, of course, <laughs> it's a given. Yeah, but I mean, they were all pretty good like yeah. you, you looking back it's hard to judge but like that's my judgment pun intended uh <laughs> is judgment day but like at the time though like i we made a lot of fun of like blister but fuck dude i ate blister up when it was on yeah, the air yeah me too i do love i do love me some arena i don't think it's a good show but yeah. it's so funny i know it, it it is it is primed for just jokes and watching and it, like filter was... in, in a in a pre watch mojo youtube era filter was addicting was cool. yeah yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> you know what's weird a lot of the shows nowadays like they're like these standout shows on networks, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like you have like your prime time slot and stuff like that, and then you have like your filler. And G four felt like almost all filler. <laughs> like in the all sense, filler, no in, in, no. in the sense that like I could put together a three hundred hour back to back episodes of G four like their programming and just put it on loop. <laughs> and like that could be like what's on my TV at my exactly. house. Exactly. Right. Same but it, it, it works. It all works well works. together. Like, it's, like it's, I don't yeah. think video, the they video all feel game different, like, I don't like think the video game audience yeah. are the people who sit down at seven PM to watch primetime television. Yeah, I agree. So yeah. it was just kind of this thing of like Yeah, there was never there was never a time where you were just like, Oh shit. Time to turn on G4. This is on every time. But at the same time, you're yeah. like, let's turn on G4, and there's always yes. something. That's yeah. kind of exactly mm-hmm. how yeah, I that, assumed it. Yeah. Um. So so, but things definitely. Unless Legends uh, of the Hidden Temple is on gas. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so it, things uh, definitely seemed as if they were off to a promising start so far. Uh, early viewers responded positively. Um, it was nice seeing such an embrace of the lifestyle taken to a larger degree. And sure, it was rather campy, um, but at the time, though, it, it did feel sincere. Having mm -hmm. knowledgeable and passionate talent was a huge help in making each project appear very identifiable. It friendly. never felt like the hosts didn't know what they were talking yes, about. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Or that they didn't want to be there. Unless you know? you're watching Sweat. Because <laughs> <Yes. laughs> yeah. no one wanted to be there. If, yeah. Yeah, it, felt like, it felt like absolutely no one wanted to be on Sweat. Yeah. It felt like yeah. nobody was in control, like with Sweat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so much of this uh, was also reflected in their site's official message boards, and the community there was active, especially since many of the show's hosts would often visit them to interact with fans. Some even went as far as giving out their personal gamer tags after Xbox Live formally launched that upcoming November. They'd set up gaming sessions and chat, uh, a connection rarely seen from industry workers prior. Return to Castle Wolfenstein, Mecha Soul, and Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Three. Fuck yeah. Uh, the, like, nights on those became common amongst the scene. It was mm -hmm. pretty dope. Uh, less dope, however, was G4's limited reach. Only 15 million homes uh, were receiving their broadcasts at all out the gate. Um, I mean, it, it wasn't available to me. Uh, in not 2002. Not me neither yeah. at the time. Uh, if, if, if I didn't say it earlier, I had to go over uh, to a friend's house to watch the shit for a while. It, it, mm -hmm. took a, it, it, it took a bit for it to become optional in, in our cable package. I mean, like, think about it, too, is that it's like you knew someone maybe who had the digital cable package before you did, and you're like, yeah. oh, man, they got G4. And, like, who wants to watch it? Like, us in middle school. But, like, yeah. we don't pay the cable bill. So, like, we're not going to be able to, like, go out and get ourselves <laughs> upgraded. And it would be a, a hard sell. Like, you know what a, I mean? Yeah. Like, eventually, eventually we did upgrade. But it's like, I'm not in control to get the thing that I want. You know, the product that would interest I, me. So We've done some market research. And it turns out that our audience isn't in charge of their, like, it is in charge of their cable bill. Yeah. Our audience is also part of the poorest demographic. People aged 12 to 18. I had a... I saw some early G4. I had a friend who had a mythical black box in his house. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Use some black magic to uh, maybe, I don't know, get all the channels. Whoa. So I think, I'm pretty sure my dad had one, but he didn't tell me about it until after I graduated from college. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what, what did he think you were going to do? <laughs> watch Skinamax, well, of course. So, uh, it was, well, no, what, the answer to what did he think I was going to do was watch like R-rated movies on HBO, uh, which like he had Which you bedroom. totally would like, have, yeah. I, I it totally wrong. have, yeah. So exactly. he, had, he had it wired right to his bedroom. And didn't tell me about it until years later, like years oh, and years later. That's great. Was that cable just like tucked yeah. into the carpet? Like you were gonna rat him cord? out to the uh, cops, no, dude. Yeah. Run through the ceiling, probably. Okay. <laughs> through the you attic. Just paint it over. <laughs> dude, that's some dad energy right there. That is some dad energy. Steal cable, but don't steal it for the whole house just for you. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> but yeah, this uh, this made it real tough to attract advertisers. Uh, on the positive side, though, it did result in us getting some fun, like Adult Swim style bumpers and um, that, or clips of game record holders and celebrity cameos. Um, except those profits still needed to be hit. Uh, that's when Hershorn hatched the clever plan to let publishers promote their releases, a la the quote two minute unit. Uh, right in the middle of certain programs, like G4TV.com or Pulse, and then disguising it as part of the show. It wasn't outlandish or even overly manipulative, since it was what enthusiasts were often coming to to check out anyway. Um, it was better than the alternative of ads that had nothing to do with games. Uh, although I did find some like movie trailers in there and stuff. But uh, of for, course, there are uh, a Tomb Raider in the womb of. Something Dark. like that. In the, cradle of life. <laughs> the, 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 the cradle of life is the second yeah. one. Yeah, thank you. That's yeah. what I meant. It was every the womb it was of like life. Every show cradle of life womb. You see where I made the connection? <laughs> Shut up. So, Definitely no, not cradle to the grave. <laughs> no, not the Jet Li. I said that. Movie. Yeah. Almost every show we watch, we're like, oh, this will be a great one to check out, and they were all from 2003 promoting that movie. <laughs> yeah, that that, that was all over. It, yeah. yeah, that yeah. Tomb Raider, Tomb Raider, and the. Cradle of Life, and then the game Angel of Darkness, uh -huh. and then yeah. also Thirteen. So I have a and question. Rainbow Six Three. <laughs> okay, so oh, yeah, Comcast 13. owned the channel. Right? Yeah, yeah. Is there any other major broadcast channels that Comcast owned, or did they just provide 
cable to people. Comcast also owns the Flyers. No. And the Sixers. Oh. At the time, yeah. So like. So Comcast Sports, which Net. I'm sure affected broadcasting. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, yeah. Like, how come oh, Comcast just didn't include the channel that they owned into the base cable subscription? I don't know. Dude. <laughs> like, they you know, pay more money. Yeah, yeah I, but like, but G four. G4 is a channel. No, you're 100% right. They own it. That would have been yeah. a... a yeah. Al- alternatively, when you have these channels that are very niche markets, right, the best way that we've seen so far to have them get mainstream appeal is not to put it in channel 300 and have yeah. people pay extra for it. It is to latch on to a dead time slot from another channel and create a section for it like Adult Swim did on Cartoon Network or Nick at Night did for Nickelodeon. I mean, yeah. the, the whole thing was like, they, you have network television, which Comcast legally has to provide. Yes. NBC, ABC, Fox, yep. CBS. The old rabbit ears. Yeah, and then you have uh, <laughs> cable, which is like your AMCs, your yep. Comedy Centrals, your Nickelodeons, your Cartoon Networks. Yep. Those companies pay Comcast to be on yes. yeah. basic mm-hmm. cable. cable, and then I think... Yeah, like Andrew said, it was to make more money. Like, G4 didn't exist. They they didn't really care so much about how many people were watching it. It was more like building up a library of stuff to sell people on additional cable packages. Because I can tell you the reason I got G4 in my house was because my mom wanted to watch the Food Network, which was yeah. also a wow, part. Wow, the Food Network was a, like a premium <laughs> channel? I yeah. think so, yeah. Huh. I bet like, you something like that that entirely golf channel also fits into that thing, right? Like yeah. it's, it's oh, a niche yeah. thing also, that it's like, uh, chances H- are you fall into one of these buckets. Uh, yeah. <laughs> HDTV, Lifetime, Hallmark, all those channels that my mom wanted to watch. And then she was like, I was like, little did you know. <laughs> yeah, <they> Trojan <laughs> you may, horse. You may be watching your romance movies, but I got TV for gamers, mom. <laughs> <laughs> and life is never going to be the same. Take that, Emerald. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, it, it seems like there is almost, like, they, it was such a good premise, and they could have reached so many more people yeah. if they just thought about how to distribute it to their consumers in a correct way yeah that, and, that's going to be a running uh a theme for a bit of this like all right forward. so hear me out here's a way to distribute it what if everybody could just go on their computers where they already play video games and then they could just open up a tab and watch it huh? well <laughs> well <laughs> yeah, so we're, we're talking about we're hey t- 2002 yeah, yeah that wasn't yeah, possible yeah. You're talking, yeah. you don't you wouldn't really have the ability to do that in any good definition until 2009-2010. No, you're 100% right, but like that's yeah, like, I was just saying that's the modern way to distribute. Yeah, that, that is the modern exactly way to, to distribute it. it. But there had to be a better way that they could have done it, especially because they own so many different channels yeah. and they get to choose like what package they want to provide this in. Cuz like yeah, you had your base cable package, channels mm-hmm. 1 through 6. You could get what those are like guaranteed. Then you had the extended package, and that's what we had growing up, which was like Cartoon Network was channel 77. Yeah, for me too. Uh, Nickelodeon was 44 or something. Yep. Oh something, my God. Something like that. I remember that. Yeah. Uh, and then after that, you had the bonus channels, and then there was like an add on that included G4. Like, yeah. Past comedy stuff. Yes, because like I thought I was going to get G four growing up, but we didn't. We got the extended one. Yeah. Uh, and then after that was like the the add on. Yeah. With yeah. Including G four and yeah, and, you watch, and beyond uh, that, or then are all your movie like yeah. HBO yes. and you watch and you all watch all Nickelodeon forever, and then your mom goes, "All right, we upgraded the cable package," and you go, "Fuck, dude." Here's Nick Jr., Nick oh. 2, Nick Games and Sports. <laughs> I never have to watch another non-Nickelodeon project <laughs> ever again. Now you're talking. But if and they wanted boomerang. it to be its own entity, stop treating it as like a second thought and treat it as like one of your actual channels. But then again, they tried to go for like the MTV look, but MTV was treated like its own property and was included in like those basic cable yeah. or those those original cable thing. It's so funny, it's like, by this time, there was already an MTV 2 and 3, I believe. Yeah. So. And those were in the extended slots that where G4 was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, MTV I mean, 2 is where the music's at, right? It, well, it was, and then, <laughs> <laughs> and then that got... Yeah. Oh, okay, well, they better just spin up another MTV. That would that's be that's actually yeah. exactly, that's what they did. Yeah, and then VH2. 
<laughs> oh, I thought, I thought that was wrong. Um, I didn't but know about it. Nah, yeah, I think it's a it's just a matter of like in the early days of like when you're talking about like channel seventy seven. Yeah. Before digital cable, it was like they didn't have the bandwidth to air everything, and it's like why air our own stuff when we're getting paid to air other people's stuff? There wasn't enough room. Yeah. Kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I guess if, I guess if other people are paying you, then. And there's, uh, you know, people waiting out the door to get their channel in on your basic cable package. Uh, then, yeah, you wouldn't put your own product out there. Right, because right? I can tell you that, like, as a Flyers fan, uh, <laughs> like, Comcast Sportsnet was a basic cable channel. Yeah. Right next to ESPN. Yeah. Because it's they one thing to... watch to... their thing instead of ESPN. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's one thing to be like, hey, we're going to put TV for gamers on instead of having, like, Comedy Central or Spike TV pay us, but it's another thing to be like, we own the 76ers and the Flyers and a lot of people in Philadelphia really want to watch those two teams, yep. so <laughs> we've made a channel for that, and of course that's going to go in the basic cable because it's sports. Is it? There's a difference between asking people to pay for TV for gamers and asking people to pay to watch their favorite sports team, you know? Yes. Uh, so their <laughs> their first major sponsorship with Pringles. Yeah, we saw that yeah, a bunch. would come next, uh, <laughs> rebranding the show Cheat as God. Pringles Gamer's Guide, which is, was something that was reflected in the episode we watched, correct? I want to watch some, I want to eat some Pringles live on the air. Right Yo, now. by the way, this advertising <laughs> campaign was so effective that over a decade later, as we go to rewatch these shows, Randy was already eating Pringles. I was eating like, Pringles! that's how good it was. <laughs> oh <Yeah>. my God! <laughs> I forgot! But it was a new flavor. See, advertising works. <laughs> um, but, you know, th- this, this like, venture ship, like, their, or joint, th- it was whatever, because most of the other companies th- joining in after Pringles were much more appropriate, such as EB Games and Namco Bandai. Like, you would start to see little interstitials of, um, hey, like, you know, Ubisoft has this coming out and stuff like that, and they were paying for it. So that was, like, that made sense for, you know. Yeah, um, I, I imagine that a lot of their revenue probably came from like publishers and yeah, hardware like companies uh, and stuff. Yeah. we have thirteen coming out. Why don't you show it on like three of your different programs exactly. this week? Yeah. You know, um, really hammer it home that people need to play thirteen. Hey, thirteen's dope. Then man. you got Randy, who's like, I love this obscure game called Thirteen, but every G four program we watched. All of them were reviewing 13. Hey, it was still obscure because they weren't reaching that many fucking people through the channel. No, but that's, channel. that's what I'm saying. Is like, I mean, this could just be subliminally like a uh, an effect yeah, of this was around the time when I got G4. But it seems like whenever we were like, oh, no, that's an episode we have to watch. It was almost all of like from 2003. So yeah. I don't know if that was just a great year or if I just have more nostalgia I, for uh, when yeah, I first I, got that channel. I was wondering that too, but I, I, I did, that just happened to be what was being archived out there on YouTube for uh, like that us. too. But um, I also don't. A lot of these shows lasted, but a lot of them didn't. Yes, mm-hmm. uh, which will make sense <laughs> mm-hmm. in a, actually only a couple minutes. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> the cost of uh, maintaining the channel still continued to climb. Uh, one hopeful win for them was their coverage of E3 2002 that summer, something they dedicate themselves in doing yearly this season on. Uh, and they did a good job in making their presence known at the event, too. Viewers were happy to have the chance to really see the expo get shown to them in like live detail in a way that wasn't possible before. Mm-hmm. Um, fast forwarding some months, we do have our first instance of behind the camera drama, uh, this being with the show Arena. Uh, in what felt to fans like it was totally out of nowhere, both Wheaton and Oates quit as hosts. Um, this was followed up when Wheaton wrote a lengthy blog post explaining the reasoning was due to how him, Oates, and their crew were constantly mistreated by an incompetent producer, further claiming he was dodging many of his responsibilities, which then caused the content itself to suffer. When he brought new players in, they were only getting paid in pizza and be forced to wait <laughs> for hours until filming. Once that word spread around those communities, competitors stopped applying to even compete. This led to the teams getting filled in by G4's own employees and interns. Oh no, Team Minority, were they, were they <laughs> well, just We don't interns? know if they, were, if they were on the take or not. <laughs> I'd also love to see that contract that says payment, one slice of pizza, you know? Or like, 
<laughs> but it's like we were talking about that watching Arena, and we're like, I wonder if we would recognize any like any of these people in who went on to compete in like esports moving <laughs> beyond it. And it's definitely, like, well, definitely not. No, because no. <laughs> they weren't they weren't finding those at the top of those ladders anyway. Because <laughs> yeah, I can. There was, like, they weren't. In, there was not enough incentive. Like I could totally see what they were trying to do with Arena, and at the same time, why they paid people in pizza, which <laughs> is, if you told any 16-year-old kid that they could be on a game show to play video games for yeah. on rights, TV, people yeah. are going to say yes. Yeah. Right? Do I think pizza is enough? No. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think that you need to give people a lot of money to tell if you want them to be on TV. I mean, I you're right, and and presumably they're also like their flights are being yeah. compensated. Well, right? I'm ass- I'm assuming it, this like... works in the same way that like if you want to be in the audience for the Price is Right is, like mm-hmm. you it's your it, the onus is on you to get there. You can yeah. come on for free. Like all you have to do is call ahead, and you will be I reimbursed think, with this. I think it was more just bad etiquette because it was like if you were waiting in a hot room all day. And yeah, then, that like, that is bad. And then you finally get to play for a few minutes, and it, it's like kind of a shitty experience. You're yeah. just like, well, I'm not going to come back and do this. It wasn't really worth yeah. it. Like even though I can get exposure, or whatever. So naturally, you're going to tell your friends like, well, like hey, like everybody who's playing, you know, whatever game, like. We'll just go play in this tournament over here and get paid potentially. Like, yep. you know, like it's, oh no, they weren't they weren't going to attract any professional player to that show. Yeah, but I don't think that was the intention. No, it seemed more more. It was more for entertainment value than anything. But yeah, it was, after enough altercations, the two hosts were out. So instead, they were replaced with Lee Rareman, an ex gladiator and actor, Michael Loudon. Uh, uh, Rareman was the one on the uh, with. Uh, Kevin in the episode that we saw because fans didn't take to that initial swap well and so Loudon was let go and that's when Prera was brought in. Mm-hmm. Um, Prera was a frequent forum user who previously was hired as a production assistant and writer for G4TV.com and uh, he also scheduled the calls with the audience. That and he contributed to Pulse upon uh, Ronnie uh, Lynn Riley stepping down as one of the anchors. Um, so things were kind of back on track again, minor hiccup, but it was fine. We're now a full year in, so that meant it was time for something fresh to shake up the roster. The most substantial addition, uh, to this in 03 was Game Makers and Gforia with a PH. The former was a really dope concept, a doc series following the process of game development right up until it ships. And, um, you know, it kind of reminds me of Noclip. And then, um, although I never got to witness it for myself, since it supposedly was aired rather infrequently, the latter was a uh, hotly anticipated and heavily marketed award show. Um, uh, Remember, the Game Awards uh, haven't existed yet, Uh, or at least they were a year out, I think, from the first Spike event. Um, Yeah, it was like 2004. Yeah. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, much of the credibility out of the gate here was pretty squandered once the categories were revealed to be mostly backed by huge advertisers that demanded to put their stupid names on everything from the powered by Mountain Dew sports award and the stride long lasting game award. Um, yeah, very different than today's game awards. Uh, <laughs> so that, that might seem like a foreign concept the, to some the, listeners. The, uh, the subway indie eat fresh. What the fuck was it? The eat fresh award. Yeah. You're, you're, yeah. Yep. Eat fresh. Yeah, yeah the game fresh indie game. By uh, I think I just word scrambled it up. But... <laughs> they had the chick mascot there. Yes, the chick mascot Sick, is a chick fr- Hydra Man. Free your skin. <laughs> I don't want to free my skin. So it it was lame, but it it did finally attract the ad revenue they needed, and viewership was high. Um, it definitely helped them coast through the early months of 04. However, it still wasn't without a few casualties along the way. Game On was the first to be canceled, likely because of budget. Uh, although other shows were steadily increasing in popularity, it still didn't seem like it was enough for additional cable providers throughout the U.S. to want to pick up the channel. Um, the standard for the era was a reach of around 40 million? Uh, 25 more than what they were pulling? The lack of major growth then caused Comcast to step in and land them into their biggest reform yet. When an opportunity came to purchase the aforementioned Tech TV from owner Paul Allen and Vulcan Inc., they quickly acquired it and merged it together with G4. The primary reason being that then the channel would inherit their slot on Direct TV. That way it mm. was available for 50 to 60 million uh, households. Yep. Yeah. Tech TV viewers 
they were not thrilled with the uh, the new partnership, as the tones and ideas for the two networks were vastly different and uh, adhered to separate philosophies. Yeah. Um, nonetheless, the deal went through, and on May 28th of that year, G4 was now branded as G4 Tech TV. Which we were watching a couple of the episodes we were watching had, like, lower thirds that just said, like, yeah. G4 be- is becoming G4 Tech TV like next week or some shit yeah <laughs> which is kind of wild to see and and you know just an approximation of when comcast digital cable packages were brought to my household this was about exactly when i got the channel like yeah yeah right, i think right either right before during or immediately after this transition i Same. I, I think but me too the, yeah. there were a lot of reruns yep. which makes sense if the if now it was you know out there in a, in a much more mm-hmm. grander sense the merger did save our topic from bankruptcy. <laughs> well, uh, for now, anyway. Uh, Tech's headquarters in San Francisco was then closed, which did cost many employees there their jobs. Um, the ones that did remain were relocated to the L.A. studio, where they would basically help them come to fruition, as well as transition over of their largest hit, the screensavers. Um a computer-focused talk show that demoed tech products that soon was then revamped into a variety program centered around internet and gaming-oriented pop culture. While a couple staff members of the cast did stay, the others, along with its entire staff, and executive producer Paul Block resigned. In conjunction to this, G4 also had the rights to air older shows from Tech TV's past lineup in order to pad their, you know slots out a bit right um there was a shortly lived series called eye drops that i never heard of until researching it was like a compilation of cg animated shorts made with everyday 3d software by amateur artists could have been interesting i have no idea future fighting machines a show that documented innovations and advancements in military technology or better known as something all our dads would probably watch endlessly (laughs) Um, Body Hits, which apparently was uh, dedicated to biology science and what is going on inside our skin suits. I believe it was hosted by an actual doctor. Back on theme a tad more was Fresh Gear, uh, about personal gadgets and gizmos. Invent This, uh, that profiled ordinary people demonstrating their inventions. It's not bad. Nerd Nation. A, biogra- a biographical show that followed the lives of everyday nerds and geeks. Mm. Uh, that sounds uh, like a stalkery kind of thing. I'm sure it's just the worst <laughs> fucking show I mean, it's ever. just, they, they go to school or work and they come back and read comics and play video games. It <laughs> yeah, it's just television. very voyeuristic Honestly, angle to it. That exact transitionary period uh, from Screensavers to Attack of the Show, when it, like... Because Screensavers was fairly dry as far as, like, covering, like, computer stuff yeah. and new new tech stuff. But it's, like, and when it went all the way into that dial of, like, covering pop culture kind of sucked. But in that intermediary period. Yeah, they had to find the balance. great, I thought. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then they just lost the balance. So, w- wait. Well, hold on. We got we got two more uh, real quick. Yeah. I, I just got to cover. There's, there's uh, Secret, Strange, and True, an hour-long docuseries on the paranormal, such as UFOs, ghosts, and time travel. <laughs> now you're talking. And Unscrewed with Martin Sargent. Yeah, I remember this one. Uh, yeah, a late night comedy talk show that featured interviews with, quote, unusual guests scooped up from around the internet. So, yeah, Andrew, you mentioned this the other night. Have you seen, I don't think I ever saw the show. I don't. Okay, so um, uh, there is one specific bit that I remember, um, and I remember a little bit more of it that I'm going to say, because I think this joke has aged poorly. Uh, but <laughs> okay. it was, uh, <laughs> so. I mean, it was definitely, like, a, a talk show comedian format, and I, I don't remember who he was interviewing. Um, I do remember that they cut to this thing. It's like, and now we have our segment, Tech Around the Globe. And then they go to uh, the, the country that they highlighted was, like, some, like, third world country with very little tech, and that was the joke. Uh, so oh it probably definitely does not play well these days. Uh, yeah, they zoomed, they, they teenager, zoomed in on Flint, I thought it was Michigan. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy um no yeah, so, so it's like ah, yeah it, it it was of its era like so many of these things um, gotcha but yeah i don't know it i feel like there weren't a ton of episodes of it at least on you know reruns anyway because i definitely yeah, wasn't watching I, it live you know? i heard of a good portion of these but i i did not watch any of them all right questions for you about tech tv one 
was it an American network or a Canadian network? Uh, San Francisco. So American. Which I I guess G uh, four was at L A. So, yes. Yeah. yeah. It was Ziff Davis. Ziff Davis. Ziff Davis. It was okay, ZDNet that, that's first. That's Ziff ZD Davis. ZDTV they're, they're based was in, the was the channel. They're that, based in yeah. San Francisco. The same company that owns like. X, official Xbox magazine and, and GameSpot and for a while and all those. Yeah. Was Tech TV ever offered in the Comcast lineup? I, I don't believe so. Okay. Yeah. And Tech TV started first. Uh, yeah. T- uh, so Tech TV was not. Uh, it was ninety eight, and then G four was o two. So. Okay. Because like, I could totally see Comcast looking at Tech TV. Uh, does Comcast mm. only operate in the East Coast? Got a Wikipedia, a little uh, Wikipedia entry for you. Okay, What's uh, up? Comcast. Yeah. Com- uh, no, Comcast is a national cable company. It's just they're they're you know they're headquartered here and yes, they were Philly, more regional earlier on. They were. They expanded a lot more in the following years with the growth Wait, of their power. In in late That's how they 2000... built their USB tower. Yeah, the yeah. obelisk that's shining over and looking over all. In this. late 2001 to early 2002, Comcast dropped Tech TV from channel lineups. Wait, mm. late t- 2001, early 2002? At the time, viewers speculated this was done to eliminate competition to a new competitor la- launched by Comcast named G4. And let me guess, Bam. they never allowed them back in. Nope. <laughs> thus d- thus devaluing mm-hmm. tech TVs, like they're, what they're worth, right? Mm-hmm. To make sh- when- so that when G4... When Comcast G4 Media acquired Tech TV and merged it with G4 in 2004, a second fan theory emerged, which suggested that Comcast's actual motive was to lower Tech TV's value and ultimately its asking price. Damn, yep. I'm, the, I'm those fans. <laughs> I'm that fan. No, that makes that's that, nefarious, dude. Yeah. That's like that's really nef- yeah, I, that that's, would, that's that completely like, in the warehouse. Uh, that would like, be they, like Disney trying to phase out X Men and Fantastic Four so they could buy Fox for cheaper. I mean, like, that's yeah. absolutely absurd. No one would do like, that. Yeah, the government would never allow that. Never. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's that right. for such a thing. That's insane. Though. That mm-hmm. makes a lot of sense, right? They launch G4. They're like, this is going to be in competition to Tech TV. They put up a whole bunch of different programs, obviously hoping that all of them become smash hits. But over time, as they figure out which ones aren't, they start weeding it out. They find issues with ad revenue and getting promoters. Yeah. Then they say, okay, let's just buy Tech TV, incorporate their best shows, cut the chaff, and we will own the market for gaming TV. Yeah. 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 Fucking nefarious. <laughs> Gigabit internet. <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy that Comcast would do something like that. <laughs> They're such an upstanding company otherwise. And so speaking of Tech TV, the, the, the list of shows that I just rattled through that I uh, I, I did not uh, see much of, but uh, which honestly neither did anyone else really, is they were all reruns and they did not play for long. No. Um, but everything as per that deal, uh, there was like... <laughs> That was all entirely co- inconsequential, as the stage was now getting set for what was soon going to be a key pillar for their whole goddamn channel, <laughs> X-Play. Um, even though I've, uh, we've already brought it up a few times, but uh, almost everybody that follows video games in this era knew of X-Play. Uh, their reviews, skits, and awards extending far beyond just their, the time slot. Uh, hosts Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb practically became the public faces of G4 in general. But not many are likely aware of its long history, uh, of it even coming to fruition in the first place. Um, its earliest incarnation going back as far as 1998, when it was known as uh, uh, GameSpot TV. Um, it was produced by the then recently la- uh, launched site of the same name and aired on the ZD TV network. Mm-hmm. Here's Ziff Davis, like said, Austin. Uh, Ses- Sessler was still a frontrunner, along with Lauren Fielder, uh, during... The uh, initial year before her uh, co-hosting duties shifted over to Kate Botello of the of fellow screensavers, uh, um, that crew uh, up until 2002. Uh, for more details on that, I highly recommend checking out the uh, the Comedy Button podcast episodes yep. with Adam. Uh, he talks very candidly about his arrival into the field as well as uh, his uh, behind the scenes time on the channel. It's it's pretty good. I just re-listened to it the other day for the first time in a while. I know there was this this one taping they, they even did in his apartment in between the buyout which <laughs> or something which is pretty good. Anyway, uh, even those uh, early roots arose out of a falling out with ZD executives where actor Simon Rex, uh, not the best filmography, don't look him up, uh, was going to be host of a program called Extended Play, uh, later GameStop, 
God damn it, game spot, <laughs> would uh, they would rebrand the project and change the format to something a bit more targeted to the hip gamer crowd. ZDTV would become Tech TV, thus ending the partnership with Ziff Davis. Uh, Botello would then leave, causing Adam to host solo for a while. Uh, that was until Morgan, another Screensavers alum, uh, joined the cast in 2004. The title swapped, and boom, X-Play was born. Uh, I believe uh, she was also on a computer talk show, Call for Help, as well. I've seen that before. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds with, like something my parents, my parents would yeah. watch. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, but yeah. It's, it's just like I'm having computer troubles. Uh, help me with it over the phone and televise it. I, w- I want to watch episodes of me that. Me too. <laughs> that <sounds laughs> like, like, it's like car talk, but for computers. Yeah. Oh my. Yeah. Z- oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, X Play was definitely the smash they needed right now, which uh, I guess helped lighten some of the blow when it came to other cancellations. Blister, Portal, Pulse, Players, and even Arena were all gone in an effort to restructure. Same with Judgment Day, uh, as the tech TV merger gave them Electric Playground, something their business department thought was too similar. That, and with X-Play now being the hot place for reviews, JD was uh, unfortunately out. Uh, was cut. Man, what a bummer there, too, because Judgment Day could cover so many more reviews, and like X-Play was like reviews plus skits. You yeah. Know? So yeah. like I, c- I can see how they thought that they were double-dipping on that, but like also, you want to have... like more sources of information on reviews just in case that reviewer doesn't jive with your separate opinions yeah like yeah exactly so yeah the the field was very limited in terms of when they first started out g4 had so much they had to cover it sounds like a lot of their early programming was different flavors of the same thing in the sense of like uh okay we have reviews then we have reviews from people with two contrasting opinions then we have you know reviews except we're drunk then we have reviews but it's all done backwards variety but as they as they consolidate and had more options from tech tv they started getting rid of the bonus flavors yeah and started putting it more towards whichever whichever flavor was more popular Mm -hmm. what is you you talked about when tech tv merged with g4 tech tv listeners were very upset right yeah uh what was the tonal shift bet- or the tonal shift that would have happened bef- after the merger like what was tech tv beforehand that their, their fan base would have been upset but if they switched over with g4 how did they contrast well i tech tv's crowd was probably a skewered uh, like a little older okay. and uh and their shows weren't uh the energy level was certainly different and, okay because it's like was G- it a more serious vibe yeah, I would say so. And and as Andrew said, a, a little bit drier, a little more direct and to the point. Okay. Uh, and G4's was a bit more, I, I don't want to say wacky, but like, they, you know, they wanted... They, uh, MTV crowd. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was It was like, it's it's the, it's the like guessing the difference between riding a bike and riding a skateboard. There's just kind of this yeah. like aesthetic, like... Yeah. I'll, I'll put know, it this different. way. I would be into tech TV now. Uh, but G4, yeah. we were in middle school when we got it, and we were exactly where we were supposed to be in the, as far as the demographics <laughs> yes. that were targeting yeah. at the time. So okay. that is a good way of putting it. <laughs> that makes sense. I disagree. <laughs> yeah, been, I mean, you, want, you way, want a little bit of entertainment. In I've been way more into G4 now, but not for the reasons they intend. <laughs> <laughs> How many levels of irony are we cutting through? A lot. It's like so, a seven-layer cake. So around here was when the channel slogan changed, too. Uh, TV for gamers turned into Stay Connected, uh, a phrase more tied to a broader techie online feel. Uh, this also went double for G4's overall mission, this being most apparent with Filter. Uh, those fun top ten video game lists were now geared towards movies, TV, and music. Uh, and among other things, yeah, uh, I know. And things things were all falling apart pretty fast. That's when uh, the channel's largest advertiser, Pringles, then uh, bounced. You know, they ducked out. Uh, although this did lead to. So once che- you pop, you can stop. <laughs> <laughs> right? right, guys. No, anyway. Once you pop, the fun don't stop <laughs> until you find something better. Yeah, uh, once you <laughs> pop, the fun don't stop until a corporate merger forces you out. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. Is that how that goes? Yeah, that's the Pringles full slogan. Uh, I, cheat did return as cheat again. Uh, without, Thank God. Yeah, yeah, yeah not, not for much longer. But. Thank the one show they needed to save. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, though, uh, X Play was continuing to grow in viewership. Uh, this was good. Uh, of course, the network was still going to need more than just that single win. 
Uh, before I go further, though, since we haven't gotten like deep into it yet, uh, what was uh, your guys' experience with watching X Play? Right. Oh, I liked it. Yeah, I think we selected a, a, a kind of a batch of random episodes for them, of, like a month or two months ago or something. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of game of the year stuff and award like specials, but I watched X Play, but like. It's weird because I, I liked X Play. I thought that looking in hindsight, like the what they were doing, they were definitely very talented individuals, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't exactly watch X Play for like the purpose of video games. I just thought it was a good show. It was just entertaining. It was like, just entertaining. And, yeah. Like oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I I liked their their opinions, but they were presented in a very like, you know, like kind of jokey sarcastic way but yeah. like you know I, I i always um i still vibed with with uh with adam and, and 16 Morgan, year old so. atheist me really vibed with it you know like, <laughs> yeah uh, that's that's kind of where i was going with it is like once again like we were we were in middle school basically when we when we got access to d4 yeah. and that was the right age for it so like i can't tell how much of it is me just fondly remembering enjoying that show's sense of humor then and how much of it still holds up although i will say that the clip we revisited that they mentioned on the comedy button uh, with X3, uh, that that was still funny. Still made me laugh. That was still good. I remember them. The cock attack. Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. Like there, there are a good, there are a good number of bits that uh, I think will always hold up on that show. But I do, you know, like when I first started watching it, they were making jokes about pre-rendered backgrounds in Resident Evil and doing a sketch based on that. Or like a parody of Reservoir Dogs where uh, some guy's talking about how he doesn't save his game instead of like not tipping, right? And, oh, like, that's... <laughs> that kind of stuff. Yeah, like that kind of stuff was really funny. And then gradually as time went on, they added like Johnny Extreme, who was like a good bit the first time. And then they kept on bringing him yeah, back. Yeah, they did and that they with had, like, a few of their yeah. characters. That's... Yeah, and like Ratty. And like as they kept on going on with like more and more of these things that they tried to turn into recurring gags, I don't think many of them worked. Yeah. Um, yeah. It not not like uh, you know how they treated their interns as subhuman. Like that kind of stuff was funny. Uh, <laughs> but you know, as as they tried to add more of that kind of joke, like the you know th their interns being like prisoners or whatever, um, stuff like <laughs> Ratty, it just kind of stopped hitting. You know. Uh, what do you, What do you think, <clears throat> Austin? Uh, it yeah, it's they're not the the funny thing that hit me when we watched the the cock attack bit is that it's also a good it's also a good review if you read past the 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 very very subtle comedy of the bit it's also a good review for that game yeah yeah like i think that the writers on that show did a very good job of of writing the reviews that were entertaining but also informative yeah 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 this, and I and I, and then otherwise I agree with Andrew. The sketches, some of them were good, most of them weren't great. The average change is that, yeah, we got but, older and the show went along. But, but I I like Adam Sessler a lot. I like Morgan Webb a yes, lot. They're yeah. great mm -hmm. hosts. Like mm -hmm. Chris said, they're very entertaining. But they're also informative. Yes, and there was nothing kind of quite like it at the you know at the, at the I time. I preferred. I liked it. I liked having both that and Judgment Day, like you guys said. Yes. But, yeah, yeah. but yeah. Uh, that was short lived. Yeah. Because Judgment Day was all those two guys, and it was like it didn't have writers. You yeah. know, it was just like. I mean, I'm sure it did, but it's just them talking about the no, game. No, it was very off the cuff and casual, just like mm -hmm. yeah. And then yeah. X Play was very produced, but yes. it was produced well. It was produced yeah. well. Yeah, that's that's the way. But like, there there's like a prompter in that as yep. opposed to Judgment Day, where mm -hmm. they're like just kind of wrapping yeah. it off. Um, so onto the screensavers a bit more, seeing as it's already uh, come up uh, several times now. Um, as I mentioned, this one was more PC gear focused. Uh, there were interviews, calls from viewers, and often helped answer tech related questions. Uh, that uh, viewers might have had. Um, of course, this was prior to the G4 days where, uh, of course, uh, it was transitioned to being more about uh, nerdy culture. And Sorry, I already stated that. But, like, all these changes in vision were very obvious. Uh, not just in front of the camera, but behind it as well, with more and more of the original tech TV st uh, staff getting laid off. Um, this rightfully upset a lot of older, hardcore fans who were there since the beginning, um, like, you know, in the 90s when you said it started, 98, 
And jumping ahead to February 2005, this only 10 months after the, the acquisition, uh, the, the tech TV tag was dropped altogether and it reverted back to simply being G4 a second time. <laughs> this applying to their Canadian branch as well. Uh, Pereira uh, then soon took over hosting for the screensavers as there was no more arena and uh, network producers practically fired whoever was left as per those mass uh, exodus, the, the resignations. Many of the workers on it were also fairly open on personal blogs and whatnot about the shakeups in management. Uh, one employee who was terminated, Dan Hard, um, even admitted in the last couple, like he said, the last couple seasons under G four that they were they were staging their phone calls. The reason being that executives quote didn't want geeks asking questions anymore, which you know was essentially the entire point of it. And the intended target audience to begin with, like, <laughs> oh. oh man, what what year was this? Uh, two thousand five. Oh, that that this, checks out with the whip set. Yeah, <laughs> this checks out completely. When was was G four actually doing well prior to that? Uh, I would say like. They it was, was was the boat afloat. It was the boat was afloat. Uh, unf- like a lot of the shows that we liked were getting canned, and the writing was still like not big on the wall because it's like I said, like X Play was a was a a pretty strong win for them, you know. Yeah. And it's so it's like they 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 were staying they were sailing the seas, but um, it and you know th- th- this it's not like they don't have any victories left, but uh. It was a lot of people essentially sort of scrambling to figure things out at this point because, like, once the the news broke about the the like the the screening of the the calls, this also then happened to uh, that that G four TV uh, dot com show where direct <laughs> the direct forum interaction too had to be pre screened by um, producers to make sure it aligned with the current brand. Host Scott but does Rubin. that mean just filtering out profanity and like you know uh, ass uh, dicks? Or... I, th- I think it's implying a bit more than that because that, that that would be the easy joke. Like, but I I think it was more that uh, they were going to handle their screenings the same way that the the other one did, where it's like if this question is too dorky or too specific, it's not. They don't you know they wanted to find things a bit more broad. Um, yeah, this is this is around the time too that every major corporation tried to stick their hands in the cookie jar that was esports and gaming as well. Yeah. Uh, you had MLG that was broadcast on ESPN in 2006 and 2007. You had the you had the championship the championship gaming series, the CGS hosted by DJ Wheat. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that was in 2006. So it seems like it could have been one of those situations where G4, the boat was afloat, but as other companies started looking towards video games and other avenues, Comcast or management ex- and executives started looking at G4 more to try and pivot what they were doing. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, and that's probably also the reason why you see a whole bunch of people get laid off because they're like, we got to adapt. This is what other channels are doing. We have our own. We're not keeping up with the Joneses. All the people that are like good and have a fan base, get rid of them. <laughs> Bring in the shills. <laughs> so yeah, the uh, G4TV.com. Um, this is when host uh, Scott Rubin left. Uh, this was you know shortly after they had the, to change up the the format uh, of you know of, of their show, and then um, he he took a gig over at Spike TV with. Gamehead, and he re- actually relaunching All Games Productions, a company that provides consulting and assistance with services relating to the field. Uh, his re- his replacement, though, uh, did bring us uh, Death Stranding character Jeff Keighley. <laughs> oh, cool! Said. That's where that character came from. <laughs> yeah, uh, a highly respected uh, industry journalist whose later career would include contributions to E3, uh, the now defunct Game Trailers, rest in peace, and founding of the Game Awards. Um, which is still going strong uh, to this day. Um, anywho, uh, back to the bumbling idiots in charge of uh, uh, <laughs> you know the, those who were desperately still trying to find an identity for the channel. Uh, they were about overdue for another slogan, right? <laughs> Stay Connected was now the generic 
Video game TV. Whatever. <laughs> it's you know what's funny? Because I don't remember either of these two tagline eras. I remember the previous one. Yeah. And there's one There's one that I, you probably haven't gotten to yet that I remember, but I don't remember these two. Anyway, come on. <laughs> it must have been short-lived is what I'm saying. Yeah. Now, what wasn't fine was Hershorn announcing that September um, that he was no longer G4's president. With senior marketing exec for DirecTV, Fox Sports, and ESPN, Neil Tiles, filling the shoes. And what did he do with uh, his new position? Well, I retooled the network, of course, as a, quote, male-oriented one. Um, not dissimilar from the aforementioned Spike... But, uh, Man, it sounds like a real change for the channel. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's basically like, it's not like a pivot. It's just them, r- like, running further in the same direction. Like, can you imagine like, you're writing yeah, a it's, show? Yeah, it's, it's, they're sprinting, I guess I should say. Like, imagine writing a show and, like, the notes that your producer sends you is like, crank up the cock jokes. <laughs> Well, then they're like, okay, no, uh, we're just going to go through more lists of ladies and talk about how they're all dominatrixes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so with with programming distancing themselves even more away from games, G4TV.com was canned. Hosts Lauren and Tina went to work with Microsoft while Keeley went back to pursue writing and producing on set instead. Filter and Sweat were also done, though. Oh, and, uh, and Cheat, well, in order to align more with everything else, they replaced Corey Rouse with Kristen Adams, a semifinalist from the first season of American Idol. She um, was not bad at this show either. She just, sure, I, yeah. when when we were going through episodes, I made sure we got the original guy because he's so much cheesier than she was. Mm. <laughs> and I, I wanted to make sure we remembered how cheesy Corey Rouse was. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> uh, although the most notable uh, uh, change in course here that I'm sure we all remember was that the screensavers was then revamped as Attack of the Show. A mixture of live pop culture coverage, comedy routines, tech reviews, and news. It did well commercially and quickly, like, it shot to their most watched outing only behind X-Play. Pereira was still on board with uh, the other co-host being actress Olivia Munn. Um, and the, the chemistry... Was, was this which, before she was an actress? Uh, did, did this show allow her to become an actress, is I guess what I'm asking? Uh, yeah, well, I, I know, you know, we'll get to when she jumped off to pursue that career, like, harder, but I I thought she might have still had acting chops prior, but I, I suppose okay. I could be wrong. I, I think the first movie I remember seeing her in was Iron Man 2, but that was after. Yeah. But yeah, the... Uh, the, the chemistry between the two is inarguable, but uh, the over-sexualized Mun did receive some criticism. Um, so, how did y'all uh, dig Attack of the Show when it was on? Like, uh, I tuned in here and there, for sure. I liked, uh, I liked Screensavers. Mm-hmm. Like Andrew said, there was a middle period. In between Screensavers becoming pop culture, but also before... Attack of the Show became what it eventually would become, where I liked it. It was good. Yeah. I liked Olivia Munn. I liked Kevin Pereira. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, I'd, it was, I'd it echo was that fun. almost exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Chris, you ever watched yeah, like the, 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 When they went from the Kevin and Kevin era to the Kevin and Olivia era, it was still good for a little while, and then they just kept on going harder and harder down the pop culture route. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't really watch all too much of Attack of the Show. Like, between X-Play and Attack of the Show, I know that those were the the bread and butter of G4. Yeah, but that, I mean, that's a good way of putting I, it. I know that they had a more devout fan base that I was not a part of. Yeah, that's fair. People followed that, like... The, them, the two of them, very closely, and uh, and if I if I hadn't already said it, uh, Attack of the Show is an hour, and um, mm-hmm. and uh, I, that was one of the few shows that that was of that length. Elsewhere, Tommy Tallarico from Judgment Day would start the video game orchestra live concert series, um, thus making his uh, his presence on Electric Playground less prominent before stepping away from it altogether. Um, but we're now in. Uh, 2006, four years after the channel's launch, 
uh, by here, what was new G4 and what was old G4 were completely different entities. Um, not just in what was aired, but who was responsible for it. And boy, did they really begin to lean harder and harder into the television for straight men demo. Uh, Filter came back, except now it was hosted by model and wife of Howard Stern, Beth uh, Atrosky. Um, I don't remember this at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, v- video game lists were completely removed in favor of embracing other mainstream topics until it was canceled a couple months later. It's probably why you don't Oh, remember. okay, yeah, it all yeah. makes sense now. <laughs> the long-lasting icons was, uh, was also discontinued. Um, this included Game Makers 2, as, you know, it was previously shoved into it, uh, leaving my boy Cinematech as the only remaining program from the channel's, <laughs> like, original launch lineup. Of course, they couldn't not fuck with that either, which I'll come back to in a minute. I know Chris is waiting oh. for it. Much of all this came direct from Comcast themselves, uh, as it was announced in October that operations would be consolidated into the same group as the Channel E, an exclamation point, and the Style Network under Ted Harbor, uh, who incidentally also formally ran it. Uh, future moves into those smaller offices that I will get into were ultimately his doing, too, um, since um, his opinion was that gaming in general was, quote, too narrow of an interest. Yeah, I mean, it's not like this industry makes any money and sells to, like, tens of millions of people or anything, like, in this country <laughs> alone. So exactly. You need something that really everybody can get behind. <laughs> On to 2007. Uh, their slogan changed yet again. <laughs> To a TV that's plugged in. That's the one I remember. God, I yeah. didn't remember the last two. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> mm-hmm, <laughs> it's mm-hmm. so funny because, like, I seriously, every every time I turned G4 on, seeing the logo in the corner, like, it just became something else constantly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was ridiculous. You think Don Draper came up with that one personally? <laughs> Once it was even 4G in a promotion with Sprint or something as well. And, uh, um. So, yeah, by, by where we are now, m- uh, much of the earlier content wasn't even being shown in rerun anymore. Uh, since those slots still had to be filled, they did the worst thing ever and purchased numerous outside shows for syndication. You ready for these winners? Campus PD. <clears throat> I know what well, they are already, well, so just, for, just yeah, so don't first, make it hurt for too long. <laughs> <laughs> we, we got Cops, of course. which as of 2020 is finally over, thankfully. Cheaters. Yep. Eh? Which uh, <laughs> I was. <laughs> which was deceiving because you would think it was something else. Yeah, but Chris, <laughs> I, you, you nearly died laughing, <laughs> like after hearing about on Discord that the host got stabbed. stabbed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like. <laughs> Yeah, it's like a show trying to catch cheaters and something that stabs you. <laughs> it's, it's, the, it's the only episode worth watching. I think it's on a boat. <laughs> then, uh, as you said, there's Campus PD, which, isn't that just Cops and, Cops of College? Yeah. Yeah. Um, fuck. Uh, the Man Show, which I almost can't think of anything that may be aged worse. Um, oh, Jimmy. Star Trek and Arrested Development for some reason? Yeah, this is the first place I saw Arrested Development. Yeah, nothing against them, but, like, why? I don't know. Ro- Robot Wars, all right. Um, there was Ninja Warrior, uh, yep. which at least that show was kind of cool. Not really designed for this network, but I'd certainly take it over, you know. Um, Cheaters. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Ninja Warrior, uh, because of G4, got picked up by, like, NBC. They do American Ninja Warrior now. Right. Yes. Ninja Warrior, yeah, the one that aired on G4, was the Japanese one, mm-hmm. uh, which was – which is – Highly popular. I think it became American Ninja Warrior on G4. Did it? And then when G4 shut down, they moved it to NBC proper. They moved it to NBC proper? Yeah. Okay. And it, just, it just flourished. Yeah. <laughs> Especially with the CrossFit boom that came. Yep. Yes. I, I guess, oh, my God. I guess if you do do CrossFit, then you probably think of yourself as a ninja. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Does, doesn't your brother do CrossFit? No. <laughs> Thank Oh, I thought he did. Uh, I would have yeah. brought that up on the oh. on the night trap. <laughs> uh, it looks like it looks like I have something to ask him after this. <laughs> I mean, he's hiding it. Yeah. <laughs> What's this under your bed? Yeah. <laughs> well, Chris, while you were out partying, I was studying the art of ninjutsu. <laughs> <laughs> so, cops and cheaters and campus PD, they would receive marathons. God, just all the time, uh-huh. and probably since there was a million episodes of them. And geez, I almost forgot about all the game shows. Uh, Unbeatable Banzuke, or Banzukai, is that how you say it? Human Wrecking Ball, uh, Bonsai, 
I, I don't know. What even was this venture anymore? It just seemed like chaos. I don't know. Uh, it's like they were trying to tell me to stop watching the channel, and I yeah. lied. Yeah. <laughs> These repeated airings uh, led to many people, including myself, checking in much less frequently. Uh, the community well, it wasn't a channel you could leave on anymore. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I guess, yeah, technically, I you, you still could. You could, but, but you just... Nothing would bring you back to the couch. You just walk away. It's like when you watch... Uh, when you watch like some random channel and they're just like coming up next a four hour marathon of like law and order fucking married with children you're like okay well time to change the channel because i don't want to watch married with children for four fucking hours <laughs> now the community did remain strong online for a tad longer uh much in part to their connections within the scene uh this showing itself the most around e3 time an event whose coverage was set to be expanded in an exciting summer and and year um all culminating with the upcoming launches of uh, the PlayStation 3 and Nintendo Wii. Um, so, uh, but hey, it wouldn't be a subject of hot button if it wasn't for some massive fuck ups, right? A big get for them that June was that they were going to have exclusive television airing of Microsoft's entire stage presentation. Remember, that was a big deal. It was, and the the Xbox 360 is just about hitting its stride. 2007, one of the most stacked years in gaming fucking ever, was, like, right over the horizon. So, what went wrong? Um, well, it appeared that no one was on top of when exactly commercial breaks were going to interrupt the conference. When did the first one happen? During the world premiere of the Mass Effect 1 trailer. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, uh, and those sudden, cu sudden cuts weren't the only burden. Uh... Due to FCC regulations, a station ID had to be issued at midnight. This snipping off the big finale when footage of Halo 3 was about to be unveiled. It was a total mess, and viewers were rightfully not thrilled. <laughs> um, the spiraling channel trekked on, though, uh, <laughs> with the uh, next pathetic attempt to attract them uh, young horny males in the appropriately named Midnight Spank. <sighs> Ooh. A block, uh. a, a block of quote unquote sexier adult theme content. Like, say it. Here we go. Just say it. Well, I'll, I'm gonna save that for. All right. So there was Ed the Sox Night Party, a variety show featuring Playboy models and hot tubs that was hosted by a sock puppet smoking a cigar uh, with a grovelly voice. I, I guarantee it's a ripoff of uh, the insult comic. Dog. Yeah, try off the insult comic. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, Wired for Sex. Uh, a showcase of how technology and the internet have affected sex and pornography. I, I can actually see that one being a bit more yeah, no, that, tasteful, that's, I suppose. Yeah, no, actually makes sense. Yeah, like, I, yeah. yeah. I, <laughs> um, less so was Video Game Vixens, uh, uh -huh. a, a four-part digital beauty pageant that gave out awards to fictional women game characters such as Best Bounce and Best Booty. <sighs> <sighs> And this is archived? You turned on yet? Uh, uh, somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I got some research. <laughs> <laughs> then there was, uh, there was something called the International Sexy Lady Show, although oh, I believe that Jesus. might have been later on, but it says it was a reality thing. They were being Force pretty subtle about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. G4's Late Night Peep Show, uh, a compilation joint that played stuff collected from around the web like Happy Tree Friends. And then lastly, a butchering of uh, Cinematech, now titled, say it, Chris? Nocturnally Missions. <laughs> Where the clip show now consisted of mostly risque moments for more suggestive releases, as well as montages from stranger Japanese games. That was bad. Uh, yeah, dude. Cinematech's still kicking, dude. <laughs> we didn't watch any of these, uh, by the way. Maybe we should have, right? Like, just... You gotta, dude. <laughs> you gotta. <laughs> Uh, they stuck to the plan, though, and even gave their shot again at original content, except the issue was that it was mostly junk. I knew some people that were into Code Monkeys, a crude 8-bit style sitcom chronicling the misadventures of a fictional company. It was... yeah. Um, I don't know, what it, What did you guys think of our viewing of it the other night? It they, was they, a good was, idea. And, yeah. Uh, Great and, idea. And the execution is aged even worse. The yeah. execution was absolutely horrendous. They went to bottom of the barrel comedy to, in yeah. order to fill the air. Like, it, there's good writing, which is like when you can make something funny and it's funny for everyone. Mm -hmm. Like, I think of like the Lego movie. The Lego yeah. movie's fucking hilarious and it's a mm -hmm. family friendly movie. Yeah. That's, that's skilled writers. Yeah. Right? When you're going to like boob jokes, vagina jokes, shit jokes, 
Like that's just you, you trying didn't to even get, get to the quick, racist jokes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's you trying to get to, oh, like a quick chuckle and the homophobia. Uh-huh. Yeah, like Code Monkeys was a great premise. I think a, like an eight bit or sixteen bit show. Like it does have the potential to be something extraordinarily funny. The best yeah. part about that entire show was was uh, Shake from Aqua Teen Hunger. Yeah, Forces. Dana Snyder. He was yeah, great. His voice actor is phenomenal. I, it's it's funny because like they clearly wanted. Speaking of that, like the ever growing Adult Swim crowd, though, like they just weren't coming close to it in my opinion. Which is funny because I I do admire the commitment to the presentation of it. Yeah, like at least like like and, and I love the fact that the first episode was is their boss at a gaming company. And it's actually mm-hmm. Steve and it's actually Wozniak. funny, but. Yeah. The part that's not funny is that, like, they give the, you know, they, they harass the one female worker and yeah. the, one, the one black dude who works for the company. Like, yeah. like Black Steve was black the character. Black Steve was his name. Yeah. Yeah. Like, get more original than that. Yeah, I mean, that joke, that joke is literally stolen from C-Lab. Yeah. And with, not in the episode <laughs> that we watched was, uh, I they might argue, one of, the, one of the only good weed jokes ever written, which was the Donkey Kong, how high can you get? Uh, which that's a great joke. Uh, and yeah. It fits that show format. I like but, the. Yeah, the it's a shame. Cuts it's between. not more of that. But yeah, yeah. hey, the the use of uh, I do support the use of the JoJo uh, or Joko song for the theme. That's of course. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's, that's that's solid. Um, then there was Happy Tree Friends again, uh, the cutesy, violent online cartoon that previously was on the mixtape of the late night peep show. It got its own full half hour. I bet that worth it quick i'm curious if this took up any space in your guys's brains space balls the animated series i knew it, it existed it lasted one season i never saw it and heard it was not good but it's like it, just no imprint on the culture whatsoever <laughs> yeah you can yeah. say that about a lot of animated series based off of a movie though yeah, I guess you're not totally wrong. But then you get good animated series based off a movie, like Star Wars, the animated series. It's still going. Uh, so out of these, Code Monkeys was definitely the one that got like it, like some traction in a way that, that the others didn't. Um, but it still only managed to last about a year. Um, so this I didn't know. Now that we're in uh, 08 on our timeline here, uh, doubling down on picking up Shows to re-air, they supposedly spent a shit ton of money on the rights to broadcast Heroes and Lost? Yeah. Yes. Oh, boy. I remember when they then when they picked up syndication rights for Lost. Doing this rather than funding anything new, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, I guess they thought, nerds, some sci-fi and fantasy crap uh-huh. will do it. Yeah. What, like... And then Cinematech, the last bastion of G4's launch, um, was then pulled from schedules. Not that any episodes are being developed since April of 2007. I just wanted to give it its final bullet point on the outline. Randy cried a single tear. <laughs> I did. <laughs> All that remained now was X-Play and Attack of the Show. Ironically, the two most profitable programs on the channel that were still determined to capture a, a separate audience. The gaming one, <laughs> you know? Uh... <laughs> In a major cost downgrade, the Santa Monica studio was closed, and whatever staff was left had to be moved to a smaller L.A. facility. X-Play uh, would then go through format changes to be seen as something more professional. And, you know, um, the, the skits were gone, with extra minutes being devoted to interviews, which was okay. Um, but its importance uh, of, like, popularity required production to run an exhausting five nights a week, which led to the crew retaliating in some pretty hilarious and envelope-pushing ways. Again, look up that podcast. Um, Didn't they expand it out to an hour at this point and then, like, fill it in with segments? Yeah. Wow, did they... Was it full full hour? I I think so. That's that, what my memory tells me. Is you like, might be right. around this era, they were like, we want this to be every video game show we used to have, kind of, sort of. So then there were just, like, blocks of different things. That they would like swap around to, like like they would throw the shot to like to the cheat section or whatever, right? Yeah, good. That's good. That's what she got kind of like. Uh, now I'm just looking it up. Yeah, they man, they might have. That would have been crazy. Yeah, because they started incorporating screensavers. Which like yeah, because it's uh, she was the one I was about to get into, which is surprising that it lasted this long. But um, the Kristen Holtz uh, basically like because it was still her, but she would pop in every now and then to give like tips during a, a yeah. couple episodes of of X Play. 
Um, going into 2009, uh, the show was reduced to three nights each week, uh, while Attack was lowered to four, resulting in further layoffs. Uh, viewership was also beginning to dwindle at a fast rate, to the degree that cable providers began dropping them as an offering to customers during the year. By November of 2010, DirecTV removed them from their service upon viewing the Nelson ratings. I presume it was around here that I lost them, I feel like. I don't know. Um, but yeah, all those efforts in absorbing tech TV and firing folks and buying all those stupid shows from other companies were pretty much wasted. Two networks were now essentially destroyed. Shortly after this, Olivia Munn um, was out of Attack of the Show to focus more on her acting, uh, with another actress, Candace Bailey, taking her place. Layla Cayley uh, didn't renew her contract there either. Um, this while G4ia simply became a piece of X-Play, the way Cheat was. There, wa there was a minor boost in engagement following an announcement at the 2010 Comic-Con that hands were being shook to give them exclusive broadcasting rights to Marvel anime in 2011. <laughs> Something, I suppose. Weird. Yeah. Then it was revealed that year that the UFC and WWE were competing against one, and one another to take over the business. At least that's what was happening until, the Uf until UFC eventually settled with Fox and the WWE later just launched their own network. Uh, more time goes by. On January 5th, 2012, Neil Tiles stepped down as CEO for NBC Universal Marketing Chief Adam Stotsky. That April, the controversial decision to axe Adam Sessler went down. Um, prior to this, he had heard rumblings from friends within the production side of things that shit was going to happen, though it wasn't until a, an actual on-air taping that the rumors had weight. Uh, yeah. So I know uh, me, Austin, and, yeah, and you, Chris, watched this clip before. Andrew, I'm not sure if you've seen it. It's really no, nuts. I don't think I remember there's this a, at all. Yeah, there's yeah. a scene... He, I think he brings it up on the comedy button, but there's also yeah. another interview with him where he talks about it, and they show the clip. He's he's reading something on X-Play, and you can see him very quickly look off camera yeah, and then just go back to hosting. Uh, and But that was um, a bunch of people in suits walking into the room. Yeah. Cause and it, that was after it was rumors that he was gonna get canned. He yeah. was like, well, they were in between filming takes. Uh, he was, um, it was the the vice president <laughs> said that he wanted to meet him in his dressing room when they were done, and then yeah, during those closing dialogues, like right yeah. before the cut to credits, that same VP came <laughs> down to the set, and yeah, that's when his eye caught him off camera, and, and that was his last day there. Yep. Yeah. See, that's how I knew I was getting laid off, is because I got a phone call from a guy that was higher up on the chain like that, and I would not be getting a phone call from him unless I was getting laid off. I was like, yeah. oh, well, that's what this call is, when the caller right. ID said who it was. <laughs> oh, no. Um, by, the, <laughs> by, by the end of the year, though, uh, he did join uh, the team at uh, Revision 3, uh, mm -hmm. a separate games coverage network that was founded by many other um, XG4 members terminated during their reign. Sadly, they aren't around anymore either, which is a bummer, although this won't be the last we see of Adam anyway. Um, Morgan did hang behind at X-Play with former MTV personality Blair Herter being put in the co-hosting spot. Uh, meanwhile, towards the end of uh, 2012, their uh, president, St uh, Stosky, was meeting with the owners of Esquire magazine to rebrand the entire division as the Esquire Network. Uh, Esquire, Esquire. <laughs> uh, this under a deal with the Hearst Corporation, as they wanted to build something aimed at a, quote, metrosexual audience. Fashion, travel, cooking, while also airing other NBC properties like Parks and Rec, Party Down, awesome show, and week-delayed tapings of Jimmy Fallon to invade the roster. Um, this arrangement didn't exactly pan out, and the previously mentioned style network then became the final choice for uh, Esquire over G4. Although sister channel Bravo and CNBC would get permissions to share Attack of the Show and X-Play. Mm -hmm. An odd second home for them. Yeah. Uh, in May, Pereira was gone from the family, assuming he had seen the, you know, the writing <laughs> uh, on the wall. He, he, he turned his priorities on his own company, Super Creative, who I think are mostly in podcasting. I didn't, I didn't dive too hard into that one. But this caused ratings to tank for Attack, uh, especially with the... Um, 
uh, the rotating door of hosts coming in and out. Uh, the regular it was bad. host, not the guest host. It was bad host. there for a while, man. It was never the same two people twice. Like it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So whoever was left following that show and X Play were then notified that October that Boast were going to cease production. They're two flagships. Uh, Attack shot their finale in December and aired it on January twenty third, twenty thirteen, to coincide with the last episode of X Play. Uh, Austin, and Andrew, weren't you talking about these? The the series finales? Because um, I I never saw I saw the finale of X Play. I never saw the finale of Attack of the Show. Oh, I showed you the fin- the finale of the Attack of the Show is kind of just like. A normal episode of Attack of the Show, but with that weird elephant in the room that it's the last oh, one. Oh, okay. And then at the end, they just bring out the kind whole cast and crew to that sit there and wave. Yeah, everybody. And then there's the secret ending, which I showed you, which is fucking yes. great. <laughs> yeah. If anybody hasn't seen it, look up Attack of the Show secret ending. It's the two guys who originally hosted Screensavers <laughs> in a coffee shop, and then they wake up, and he goes, I just had the weirdest dream where, like... <laughs> Our show stopped talking about tech and started becoming like a pop culture nightmare hour. <laughs> and he's like, that is a weird dream, dude. And then That's they just amazing. like f- get on jetpacks and fly to the tech TV headquarters or something. <laughs> it's very funny. It's so good. <laughs> now, post those ending, uh, Morgan Webb went to work at Activision Blizzard um, for a bit before later having a position at Bonfire Studios. And Blair Herder excited to be uh, uh, exited to be a part of DC Comics, uh, at least for now in the story. Uh, G4 continued to limp on, showing nothing but those syndicated works, along with occasional reruns of classic shows. With the future pipeline empty, about all providers left carrying the channel dropped it. Time Warner, Vios, uh, Bright House, Cablevision, even the licenses they had purchased before were starting to expire, resulting in only music being played during transitional hours. Charter Communications and Clue, K or C L O O, whatever that is, were said to be some of the final carriers. Same with Cox Media and um, I guess uh, Dish Network replaced them with Esquire by this point. This left old daddy Comcast holding the hot potato all alone. Their last day in operation before cutoff being uh, November 30th, 2014. Uh, a friendly note was added to the programming schedule reading, Thanks for watching, G4. Um, it's not 100% verified, but I did see numerous people mentioning that the last two um, slots filled were of the pilot and finale of X-Play. They then switched back over to Pong in reference to their launch from 2002, the game board getting tinier and tinier until finally a teeny white dot accompanied by audio of a Comic-Con attendee shouting, I'm at Comic-Con at the top of their lungs to Pereira. It was taken from an older segment there. The single pixel then shut off the way an old analog TV would to the sound of a Game Over bloop from Donkey Kong on the Atari 2600, along with the Game Boy startup ring. After a few seconds, an automated message uh, on a title card from the provider popped on the screen, informing the viewer that the channel was no longer air, like on the air, and, and poof, G4 was gone. Uh, kind of sad, and a, a bit of a melancholy way to end it there, if you ask me. They're, they're slow death. Whoever decided to do that stuff is both uh, a poet and wrote one of the saddest endings to a story I've ever heard. <laughs> I watched it. It says uh, somebody did like I think TiVo it, and you can see it. It's just a little pong screen going out. And, yeah. Uh, so let's take a second now to really break down what led them here. Uh, mismanagement being the obvious key factor, a struggle to find an image. To explore some factors and suggestions from a YouTube analysis by Good Bad Flicks, where I got uh, tons of information from, thank you, person, uh, they pointed out how, despite the video game-related content mostly performing well, the pressure to push away from that stuff never seemed to pay off. Um, they didn't like, they didn't need to spend so much on reruns of Quantum Leap and American Dad, or they needed to stand by and deliver on their initial premise. Like, E3 coverage, hiccups aside, were successful. Same with their review shows. Like, the insistence from out-of-touch TV executives to pivot into a spike was not the right move, and, and gutting what was acquired from the tech TV merger wasn't either. What is funny, though, was the potential goldmine they kind of had. Uh, when Neil Tiles spoke out in response to the network's complete overhaul, he foolishly commented the reason for it was due to gamers wanting to play games, not watch them. 
This statement, of course, being countered <laughs> less than two years later when Amazon bought Twitch for $970 million, uh, <laughs> after the rise of Let's Plays and personality-based streaming had made it the fourth most trafficked site in the, on the internet. Yep. <laughs> like, Get at shit least on. in the U.S. Yeah. It was kind of like a Netflix blockbuster situation, you know? Like, maybe if he had bothered to try and foresee any of this, G4 wouldn't have crashed and burned the way it did. Instead of the general thinking being in terms of traditional cable television, it probably should have been treated more to that of a service or a website. Imagine if they had embraced the competitive side of the market outside of just arena. Esports are now a colossally huge business, and they were in just the right position to take advantage of that. Publishers would have likely killed for this exposure at the time. Didn't even matter how long they ran. The channel had open slots before filling it with garbage. The shows they did create were enough and had plenty of fan interaction. They weren't that expensive to produce either. The extra hours outside of these could have been devoted to anything from tournaments to speedrun to even tabletop games like Magic or D&D. Odds are there'd be serious crossover in the demographic. Um, plus, they had the connections to back them and the talent to run it. Uh, I understand hindsight is twenty twenty and all that, but... Like, just think of how much more, like, nerd culture has bloomed out into the mainstream these past 15 years. Like, many consider the prospect, like, had been doomed to fail, like, from the start, but I just, I don't believe that that's true. Like, you know... Right when uh, Kevin Pereira was leaving Attack of the Show, he did an interview with Charles Hershorn, the network's former president and founder. He honestly regretted the sloppy takeover of Tech TV, while further saying that if he was able to do it again, he would have done it in a way that wouldn't have alienated both audiences. He also didn't present himself here as being much of a gaming enthusiast, and that was okay. He respected them. He saw the value, and, like, that was sort of all they needed as long as the correct people were put in charge under him. E like, even his scouting of experienced cast members was handled very intelligently. Granted, the communication between these hires and the production officials was indeed poor, um, upon facing a downfall, input was often ignored, and it didn't like appear that the channel itself was ever willing to stand behind those that they were <laughs> that, that were doing their best to help it um the expendable nature of working under g4 had an, had to be an like an awfully toxic environment uh all while at the same time the market was growing bigger and bigger each day it didn't take long for something that began as unique and punk rock to morph into a shitty version of this of the same channels they wanted to avoid and actively mocked uh, just like MTV, irony, um, but the amateurish charm was their identity, and a significant portion of those brought on board were dedicated into making it special. Looking back, though, it did greatly assist in launching, like, a lot of careers and paved the road in making games coverage and entertainment more accessible. Um, finding the right revenue path, however, lied the issue, only causing higher-ups to hammer down harder on the passionate people keeping it alive even if that stuff was figured out was their demise still unavoidable like after all the the demo that was being targeted was already flocking to the internet to consume me media in a similar spirit for free in the end though it merely became a failed experiment in uniting video games with tv a proposal that no one would dare attempt again or at least that's what everyone ever fucking thought i've learned to never say never on this podcast um because just last year, on July 24th, 2020, the official Twitter accounts of G4, X-Play, and Attack of the Show were suddenly reactivated and posted a short teaser video announcing the revival of the once dead-ass network. Uh, this underneath a message that simply read, We never stopped playing. After over half a decade of silence. Um... It also gained a lot of attention, and it happened during Comic-Con at Home, their first virtual streaming edition of San Diego's biggest convention. Um, the website came back as well, uh, cheekily uh, re re like reopening with a uh, playable version of Pong embedded. Mm -hmm. If the user won, the page uh, would then redact to a mailing list. I never actually did this. The once initially perceived as a joke story was then further confirmed to be real when a month later on August 12th, Olivia Munn uh, revealed her negotiations on a multi-year deal to join again. Fellow veteran Adam Sessler then uh, signified his return in September through a video uploaded uh, on G4's YouTube channel by hopping into the role of his fictional Crazy Adam character from X-Play 
and encouraging fans to submit applications or nominate personalities in an effort for the venture to scale the field and the hunt for new talent. Um, on November 16th, uh, G4 released a press statement saying a special event was coming called a very special G4 holiday reunion. It was hosted by wonderful, cool guy Ron Funches, as well as uh, many other former familiar faces of the channel. It was presented on Twitch uh, a week later and even made its debut on television through sci-fi. Um, oh. uh, there was a charity drive to fund uh, community partners uh other rad dude austin creed aka xavier woods uh the wrestler um was shown to be the first host uh added to the team following that search coming into this year it was announced on january 28th that g4 was fully reinstating uh attack of the show and x play and they prepped to drop quote sometime in summer 2021 february 5th uh indiana Roro Skurin Black and Ollie V. May of Legion, League of Legends esports casting fame said they would be involved in an upcoming show centered around professional gaming. Not unlike what Good Bad Flick suggested and I supported a few minutes ago. Seven days after that, Pereira stated that uh, he was now back in uh, to take his old spot at Attack, Blair Herder as well. Uh, otherwise, um, uh, I guess Blair was X Play, but uh, otherwise they've tweeted that they were looking into air uh, more anime and attend more conventions when you know when that's possible. But their commitment was absolutely beginning to show here. Uh, though just to temper expectations, seeing as that we are currently in uh, in April, only time will tell if they really truly nail it this go around. It's honestly tough to even say what exactly G4 2.0 is and and where they can fit into the highly competitive fast moving and ever changing world of video game content creation in the modern generation um regardless of being free from the shackles of television executives um <laughs> so just to end it on a little bit of a question here um to you guys how do you think this will do and like what do you think it'll be what would you do if you were in charge of it will it be room in the such an already crowded space you know could it could it prosper to die all over again i mean these are very different questions <laughs> what i think it will be versus what i would do <laughs> uh, i mean i think that it needs to be personality focused oh yeah because sure. just doing games coverage is not enough anymore uh and i think that there there's just too many places for it or yeah, I think that there's 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 certainly a an opening for high production value video game content featuring teams of people. Yeah, because everything is so singular now. But I don't know. I think that it all depends. I think that they can get away with it depending on how much growth they want. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, like hindsight is always twenty twenty, right? And G four overall, they made. The executives made short-term decisions that eventually eroded the brand over time into fucking nothing, right? Yeah. And it could have been the biggest thing now if they had just waited out the shitstorm at the time. Totally, yeah. Like, they really could have helped cable TV, really. They are the prime candidates for streaming services, which a lot of big channels nowadays are having difficulty adjusting. How many people are actually subscribed to Peacock, besides maybe Austin? I don't have Peacock. Oh, it's the one. Go. I don't even. I don't even have. How peacock. many? Yeah. How many streaming services <laughs> are out there, right? And you're talking about these cable TVs are having difficulty getting access to this marketplace that Netflix and and Hulu. I mean, have it's, it's monopolized. It's, it's funny because they they haven't said any sort of payment structure for this. It's pres, presumably would just be. But Twitch. When yeah, like, when this uh, when this stuff do, came like, out. G4 T G4 could have been the prime service for something like a streaming because most people go online anyway to watch video games. Oh yeah, right. In an alternate world, Twitch could have just been called G4. Or, you yes. know, like yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And like, I, they struggled for years with this issue with brand identity. And the thing about brand identity is that the longer it remains rock solid, the stronger your brand becomes. Right. Mm -hmm. So like. What could have been the dark years of G4 became the death of G4, but, like, if they weren't so short-sighted in, like, how can we recoup losses on this, yeah. there was no larger vision into what the future could have held, and coming back now is completely plausible. 
Yeah. Right? Like, but how do you... Because, for one, there is a need for high production value, right? There's a million rise and fall documentaries that are 45 minutes, but when you watch them, it's literally a slideshow of images from the games. There's no actual production value in. It's just people's thoughts, that kind of thing. There's, there's very few, like... Well, I shouldn't say very few. Very few in the grand scheme of things of YouTubers that have very high production values, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, you guys probably watch a lot more of them than I do. The only one I can think of is pretty... I mean, he's pretty despised. He, he's got something with the Zionists. Uh, John <laughs> Tron. <laughs> what? John, like, I'm such very confused. I know, yeah. John, John Tron has very high production value in his, in his videos. Very, very high production value. But, like... There's very few people in that echelon that, and these are the resources that networks are equipped to provide at a very cheap cost. Because the barrier to entry into right, high but, production I mean, is think, very, very high for a single person. Do you think they would change like the, uh, like if they were standing behind single content creators, though, that they would try and shape them into doing something no, different, they have or to, would they just hands no, off? No, you, you yeah. can't. You can't try. If I was managing g4 i would take a look at the landscape and say we cannot compete with the f the hyper and blistering fast pace that that video games and video games news evolve into yeah. right every day there is new breaking news and then five updates that happen afterwards and post updates about and what happened an endless amount of avenues to find all that yes stuff. Yeah. so if i was managing g4 i would stick to the big brands that I would stick to coverage of the industry itself because that generally moves slower. I agree, yeah. And I would stick well, to it, it, games and genres that if don't they, move as quickly. If they had the connections to get that news firsthand rather than it, them just kind of regurgitating what other outlets are already delivering. Yes. Getting news but. firsthand is like the Game Informer model, and that's not really working out for Game Informer. Good point. Yeah, where it's yeah, like, you know. hey, we paid for this, to, you know, to, like our, our cover story. Thing. Like... Yes. Like, I, you're think, not, you're right. not I think that they have the production and brand recognition and marketing dollars to kind of like surface things. Yes, they have the reach. They have, they have the them. reach where like I would just take things like AGDQ. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Speed yeah. running. Like IGN has a series called And look Dev at the production of those like IGN that's... has a series called that I love called Devs React to Speedruns where they oh, just yeah. they just watch yeah speedruns and then comment on them like that <laughs> with some production value yeah. would be great. Yep. I also would really hope that they would use that reach to do things like connect like almost like Pulse when it first came out. Mm -hmm. Connect industry veterans to like questions or uh, things that people who are actually playing games now are concerned about. Yeah. What is what is the the head of Xbox marketing think of the state of video games right now? Where do they see it going? Right? Like, I would love to know that. Why? I may hate their answer, I, but I would love to know it. Do you think uh, it's also like uh, it makes sense for them to like extend a little bit uh, outside of video games where there like is like tech in general cross well. I guess, yeah, kind of, or or just, I mean, pop culture, pop culture, oh, yeah. but in a more tech and pop culture, because you have like, yeah, but tech... I'm gonna say in a more respectable way, like you know, like sure, yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, tech has come such a long way. You have like fucking Apple and all them do reveals, conferences and, conferences yeah. and reveals in the same way the video game industry does. Exactly. Yeah. You I... have Marvel. If you're covering C Shit. CES, you're covering yeah. Comic Con. Yeah. Cover, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, absolutely, absolutely. Cover mm -hmm. E3, cover CES, cover like all the big gaming conventions. PAX I think, and Tokyo Game I, Show. And... I guess maybe a better way to describe it is like uh, the other day we were talking about uh, people who now have made careers off uh, scamming scam centers, mm -hmm. right? Like you could do a piece, literally interviewing them about what they do. As opposed to doing a piece about some viral video that just went viral last week. Yeah. You know, because there are plenty of sites out there that are covering viral ri viral videos, but there are not a lot of people that are doing... I, I think what... It's not even just working with individual YouTubers, or, or I should say content creators, who, who want that freedom of, to be able to, like, 
you know, be independent from a yeah. system. But it would probably make sense if they were to partner with like this is just an example, but like a, a group like College Humor that's not doing well right now, yeah. but still likes that has a lot. They they have a lot of nerd focused, you know, like shows and videos that gamers yeah. would be interested. In. You could even frame them more like in in like. But it's I. You know, I I don't know. I'm curious to see if this is even shaping to be like a 24 hour streaming thing that people could just flip on whatever. Like we've said. I mean, it would or, have or to whatever, be on like demand, right? Like that's that's what all of this stuff is now. Like I don't I don't know that it would just be streaming because when you have production yeah. value, you've got to do takes and stuff like that. I mean, like what I think it'll be, which is again different than what I would do. <laughs> what I think it'll be is I think it'll be. Um, uh, not quite the end of Attack of the Show, but pretty close to the end of the of Attack of the Show, like one of the <laughs> okay. last eras, but not the last era. Um, and I think same goes for X Play. Uh, I think that's what they're aiming for. Um, you mentioned that they were going to have like a League of Legends uh, caster uh, involved in there, which yeah. to me, and I I hope I'm wrong, says to me that they are going to do League of Legends esports stuff. But that is a thing that for that game in particular, Riot is already providing. So hopefully. They are doing that yeah. and, and that level of production value, but for other games. And I think there's a, a very good market for that. Um, and I think that is one of many facets they could go. Mm. Um, hopefully they... All right. And here's here's what I would do. What I would do is I would keep your X play and your attack of the show. Um, I would keep an esports focused thing, whatever form that takes. Uh, and then I would realize that the value comes from a mix of long form and short form content these days on streaming yeah. services, right? Yeah. yeah you want know, your 45 sure. minute to an hour long show like those, but you also just want, you know what? I want to turn on, uh, you know, a speed a run that's like hours, that's several just, hours long. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah. Speed runs work too, but it's like, even just, it's like, okay, I want to turn on this, you know, I'm a big Magic the Gathering fan. I want to watch uh, this weekly Magic the Gathering show where right. they make goofy decks that are dumb strategies but they're funny when they work no you know? that's that's Something a like that's that. a great like idea for us. <laughs> yeah. that's that's what i mean like like a 10 a 10 to 12 minute thing that's kind of like you know like when you watch like a giant bomb like 13 deadly sims or whatever right totally like that yeah. kind of thing where it's like we have now constructed our own dumb rule set around this game that already exists it'll be a good laugh it doesn't cost much to make and you can yeah. get one of these regularly you know See, here's the thing you're 100 percent right but i'm curious how part like what how would partners be incentivized? I guess just having an increased budget, but it's like, say like, you know, like you notice something like, like no clip, like, you know, Daniel Dwyer's thing. And it's like, well, you, he doesn't, he's already working outside the system on his own and, and accomplishing that by like, you know, like, like, it, 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 I wonder if they were like, Hey, like you could have a show on our like block or channel or whatever. Like what would encourage not just him, but somebody in that position to want to join that unless it's, Unless it is the promise of just like a, a an increased resources. Uh, yeah, in in that case, I'd imagine that the incentive is we are now capturing like more interests that are in this gaming bucket, right? Yeah. And it's like if I subscribe to the service, I get that production value for whichever particular niche of a niche is in this interest. It yeah. De it depends on who they're trying. And to there's capture. bleed over from other things they're watching. It, it, you know, it, it like, depends. Yeah. Like if you're talking about a content creator, there's no incentive for the highest echelon of content creators to go over and, and put their show on there, right? Right. Like, the top Twitch streamers uh, are, are not going to Are pretty comfortable, on, I think, yes. doing what they're doing. They're, yeah. they're pretty comfortable with their $800,000 in donations they get every six months, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. They're not going to go over. The people that are interested in expanding out are, like, esports teams, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, esports teams don't they only know how to do one thing and that's manage an esports team right but if you're trying to get like something like uh what is it like to be a professional gamer in 2021 now you have like oh what do you know the golden guardians have signed to, have have signed up to be on a block with G4 doing a five part documentary about like this is what our players go through in their daily, their daily lives then they have the resources to be able to do like an actual high budget high production thing right uh and that they otherwise would not have had and when it comes to like commentators like it is going to be personality based the thing about commentators in different esports fields n not a whole lot of them actually have their own show they just show up at events and it's kind of expected that they do there are a few out there that have their own show like side things but uh, they, they would greatly benefit from joining up I, I wonder if viewership is, in, is still enough in, in revenue to 
to keep this kind of budget or if no. you you have to still work with publishers you, and you, adver- like no, you, you, you got to work ads, smart ads, yeah ads my friend especially if they're offering it for free what you would have is you would have a free front end that has intersparse with NordVPN and Ridge Wallet, and whatever other uh, Ridge right, Shadow but, but Legends. It's, but it's like that. But the, that, the back that, end because like, that'll work model. if you're just a single person on YouTube. If you're a company of one or even uh, if uh, you, you know, replace like, Express and NordVPN and Ridge Shadow Legends with larger advertisers, you yeah. replace them. Yeah, with you, you build the walls Legends out of Mountain Dew and the tables out of Doritos. <laughs> yeah, I. Uh, like you, you replace it with League of Legends mobile ads or Hearthstone ads, right? From big companies because you are backed by Comcast, yeah. you have leverage. You don't into, want to test the tolerance of viewers though, because corporations and their ads. People do like get you know annoyed with that stuff. I hope that G four makes it, and I, like I'll tune in. Yeah, to see what goes yeah. Well, 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 we'll I'm find excited out. to see what they do. Honestly, like I said, if they if they just were like, "Hey, we're gonna re-air a bunch of our classic shit on a, on a Twitch channel in good faith," I'll be like, "Oh my god, <laughs> be, they could call it Cinema Tech." <laughs> <laughs> But that's the tale of G4, y'all. Uh, a dense timeline of, of dreams, twists, turns, and errors. Uh, I hope their return to form is successful, like you said, Chris, at, at least for those excitedly wanting to bring something as, as different and as novel as what that was back into the landscape again. Thank you so much uh, for being here with me, everyone. Uh, I know this was kind of a long one. Not all of them uh, will be. Uh, shout out once more to that YouTuber, um, Good Bad Flicks, uh, and uh, you know, check him out. I believe he still uploads pretty regularly. Otherwise, um, <laughs> thanks to the rest of uh, YouTube, uh, IMDb, Wikis, uh, the Wayback Machine, of course, for the endless forums I browsed. Um, sorry if I forgot anything. I don't think I did. I didn't bring up web soup, I guess. Eh. Uh, the last thing I will say, though, uh, regardless of how uh, G4 2021 does, uh, who's ever got the rights or the recorded tapes or copies or whatever of everything we talked about today, get them out there if you can. Um, save those pieces of history because, man, so, so much of this shit has just been lost to time, and I hate that. Uh, there are a portion of a few of these out there. Um uh, some of these shows anyway, but like, uh, you know, none of them are, are clearly organized or appear complete. Uh, G4ZD Tech TV in particular has been doing a great job of trying to collect and preserve all that old footage, uh, though without any DVDs ever releasing, I know that um, uh, has probably been super tough. I want every episode of Cinematech, goddammit. Blair says he's got stuff, but hasn't been able to access it due to COVID procedures. I don't know, though I... I'll believe it when I see it. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah. Um, thank you, Austin. Thank you, Chris. And thank you, Andrew, over the over the interwebs. Um, it's been fun. And uh, if, if you want to take us away with some with some plugs, Austin. Yeah. Uh, welcome back. Uh, we have a whole bunch yeah, of episodes. It's been a while. <laughs> from the past. You can access all those at hotbuttoncast.com. And we have links there where you can subscribe on iTunes and Spotify and all those services. Uh, review us on iTunes. And also check out our social media, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Hot Button Cast. Yep, we're back. And uh, keep yourself occupied with going, checking out maybe at some of our old library while all new, all new stuff's coming together. Mm-hmm. Um, Andrew, Chris, do you guys have anything you want to plug? I, I mean, Andrew, I know you're working on stuff. I don't know how much you could say, but uh, I think I you can, can say, yeah, I can say that I'm working on a cool game called Rushdown Revolt. It's like if you combine Super Smash Brothers and Guilty Gear, it's pretty dope. Yeah. A lot of fun. You can go to rushdownrevolt.com and buy a slacker pack, which will get you into all of the closed alphas. We occasionally have open alphas, um, but this will get you access uh, all the way through launch. Yeah. And you can check that out. It's a lot right of fun. on. I got it through Steam. I think you too, Austin. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I have absolutely no plugs. Uh, <laughs> but if you tell me there's a promising career in selling bootleg cinema tech DVDs on the corner, <laughs> I'll be your only customer and <laughs> five, five <laughs> keep you in business. Five dollars a DVD. <laughs> yeah, thank you guys for having me. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Goodbye. <laughs>